Hello and welcome to A Perfect Match. I'm Asia and we are here to talk about Married at First Sight, Season 17, Reunion Part 2, which is our second to last episode of this season that has lasted 84 years. I am here with my amazing co-host who is the most unpositive person ever, but I, I still, you know... I still hang with them. Jason Reed. Jason, how are you? How dare you? People call me Mr. Positive, Mr. Upbeat, Mr. Sun is what people call me. Okay. How dare you? I just, I got, <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. And for, okay. And I, I want to get this out of the way as well. Okay. I'm all for the bit. I'm all for comedy. I will not be shaving my beard off in the middle of this podcast. <laughs> I won't do it. I thought about it. I said, no, I can't do it. I'm dedicated to the craft, but I can't go that far. I can't do it. You'll cut your hair, but you won't cut your beard. No, I won't. I won't cut Just my I won't do it. For the views. Yeah, for the lulls, for the views. I just, I can't bring myself to do it. I, I really, I had an internal struggle. I said, wouldn't it be so hilarious if I just left and came back? Uh, you, know, how, you know how long it would take to get rid of this thing? A minute. You guys will be done already. And I'd be like, coming at the end, like, hey, isn't this funny? I don't have a beer anymore. <laughs> You're like, just, oops, it's over. So <laughs> Now you have no beer. Go. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, when y'all listeners out there, y'all thinking, oh, Jason's so committed to the podcast. He, you know, he's yeah. so dedicated. Think about this moment. So I, I think it was a very underreported story about how this reunion broke Austin. I think he literally... <laughs> I think he broke inside. He was like, he he left. He shaved his beard. We don't know why. We just he just showed back up with no beard. Like what? Yeah. What happened? And then he didn't speak for like the whole second part of the reunion. He had a tummy ache. <laughs> oh, he uh, and, he comes <laughs> and go shave my beard. What? What? Uh, uh, that that was like what in the world's going on with Austin? I think he, well, I think we broke the man. <laughs> honestly, but we are not here alone. We are joined by someone who was here with us back in October. <laughs> Mari Fourth. Mari. How are you, how you been? <laughs> right. A lot of new things going on, actually. She's grown, grown a whole human inside of her <laughs> during the length of this of this season. Literally. Truly. <laughs> truly. A whole human has been. We making... went from zygote to fetus. <laughs> During the length of this season. I'm not sure if that's scientifically accurate, but I'm just using those words. You close. You very close. We're about to be a baby because we still got at least one more episode. <laughs> that yeah. don't make no sense. Oh How my gosh. I I'm glad to be back. I I was simply floored. I think I spit out whatever I was drinking when I was listening to you guys and you said that last week. I was like, no, they have not. And then I was like, oh my God, yes. Yes, I was there. It was so long ago. I, I There's been so many things that have happened in that time in that time spot. But like, I'm, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad Jason isn't shaving his beard. I'm pretty sure also, I wonder if your, your wife will let you because Lord knows. I won't let my husband take take his off. So Austin doesn't no. have a wife, so he can he can shave his beard in the middle of a reunion. I, you know, that's a good point. I I think my wife would be pretty mad at me if she I she would be. Day. Yeah, so, yeah. It, Something told me that. Like, yeah, it's like that's what you do our... on that little podcast. <laughs> <laughs> she would look at you like <laughs> side eye yeah, for sure. It would be <laughs> that's it for you. <laughs> yeah, you didn't come back for the where are you now or where are they now? That's or what I'm about to say. Oh, my wife said I can't podcast about the show anymore. She said, she said, if I'm doing something, shaving my beard for the podcast. I can't do it. 
I was that's what I was about to say. I was like, is it too late for me to dip and come back for next week when we finally find out why the girls hate Chloe? <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I was joke I was joking on on uh our, in our Facebook group because they were talking about you know how juicy the preview looks for the where they now special. I said we're gonna have to have a reunion special for the where they now special because <laughs> we're gonna have to talk about the things that happen in the where they now special, and then oh, after gosh. the reunion for the where they now special, you might have to you know keep, keep up for the, with that. It's just going to be a never-ending cycle. I oh just my God, very never-ending. They keep pulling no. us. They Please keep pulling us it. back in. They call keep pulling us back in. No, <laughs> they keep season. pulling us in. Okay. They say, "Oh, you thought you thought you were done. You thought you had enough of these people. Boom, more fighting. Here you go. Come on back next week. Come on back. Come on." <laughs> yeah, it, there, sometimes you know there is a such thing as too much. Oh yeah, <laughs> this a, this episode I, right. Here. Yeah, I and I can't even say too much of a good thing. Because, you know, we've had our our complaints about this season. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's been entertaining at points. But it's just like, there is a certain point you got to wrap it up. Um, I would disagree with you. I, I, I think I'm still being thoroughly entertained at this point. <laughs> um, I, I will say that. It's you that drama. You know, mm -hmm. for those watching, you see my background. Last week, I was in yeah. a boxing ring. This week, I'm in a battlefield, scorched earth. <laughs> like, yes. we, took, we, took it, we took it to a whole other level, and I appreciate it. And I am excited for next uh, week to see the more, more mess and nonsense. So I, I'm here for it. Now, I think, it, I think we're, like right, like, right there. We're, like, right at the edge where the water is going to pour over, and I might be like, mm. yeah, I think I've had enough. I think we're right there. So we're at the perfect spot to cut it. Well, I'm most excited to see what what is this they're teasing us? What how are Michael and Lauren teasing us? They know people are talking about them. Clearly. Yeah, I mean, Mike Michael you know, says yeah. it in the preview, he's like, yeah, the internet's talking about this. I, I honestly think it's gonna be a nothing burger, probably. Right. But I do think that I mean, we saw it seems like Lauren and Michael connecting may have rubbed Chloe the wrong way in a sense. Maybe uh, at least that's because who gets mad over a follow? Us. Yeah, right. You know? That seems I think odd. They're leading us to believe that, like, that might be one of the reasons why Chloe falls out with the girls. Yeah. Oh, can't wait to see. So we'll be talking about that next week. Make sure y'all go subscribe to the Love at First Sight fee where you can get all of our podcasts. Um, leave us a five star rating or review. We would love to shout you out. We're for this season. We got this episode and next episode. So if you want to be shouted out next episode, leave us a five star rating or review. Uh, the first one I want to point out is from RN Running. Uh, it's titled "The Best." It says I've been obsessed with this podcast for years, but lately y'all have me laughing out loud constantly. Love this podcast. Y'all are the best. I'm going through some heavy things right now, and the show slash podcast is my favorite distraction. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening. Is, I really appreciate that, that. I feel like I'm doing my good deed uh, by have, by being on this show. Wow, I really appreciate that. That's okay. so great. That was yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so humbling. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, but seriously, that is that is great to hear. Uh, I appreciate uh, that we can be some levity in people's lives. Uh, that is great. Mm -hmm. um, the one I want to do is from Knit Girl Twenty Four. It's entitled Love This Podcast. It says, at this point, I only watch maps so that I can listen to this podcast afterwards. Jason and Asia are hilarious and provide great entertainment and interpretations and impressions of this ridiculous show. <laughs> favorite podcast and absolute favorite podcast host. Honestly, highlight of my week, most weeks, and I'm super sad for the season to end. Well, that makes one of you. Asia relate. is excited. <laughs> Asia and Mari cannot wait for this season to end. Uh, yeah. Look. Yeah. If it was like 30 minute catch ups, I'd be down for that. The two hour, the two like, hours. that is so, <laughs> it's a because lot. we were, I feel like we were in a, such a great spot when the episodes were an hour and a half. Then they just mm -hmm. snuck in these two hour episodes. Yeah. Once we got into round three of the guys and girls together, and we were talking about the kind of the same stuff. I'm just like, okay, yeah. Probably, probably should have cut it a little sooner than that. This yeah, reunion, yeah. there are so many spots where I thought it was gonna end. Like there was <laughs> one spot. Like, it's like Lord of the Rings. Like, it had five endings. Yes, like fifty minutes in, it felt like a like a oh, what did you what did you learn? Yes, I I, yes. I learned all this stuff, and then it was like next up we have Lauren and Orion. <laughs> like, oh, shit. And, and then like oh, and the crazy thing is, the crazy thing is they end the segment talking about. You know, we've learned so much and we're going to let the bitterness go. And then the very next segment, <laughs> everyone's yelling at each other. 
No, we learned nothing. I feel like I just, I don't know if this was shot out of order and then shown it wrong. Like, you just said you learned stuff and now you're back to your same old nonsense. Oh my gosh. I, it felt like watching two different shows over at some and point. over again. Yeah. Oh, and then the God. backstage stuff was just. Oh. And they chopped it up so weird because they want us to appreciate the backstage stuff. So they show oh. us the backstage or the cameras being, I don't know, not showing the show like they think they're not showing the stuff which is a theme for them this year mm -hmm. and they're like and then they do the official title card like oh wait no this is supposed to be the real show and we the backstage stuff wasn't real i guess i don't know maybe they it was did weird so consistently this season because of all the fakeness on camera so they're like mm -hmm. i want y'all to see as much as possible of these people outside of when they think they're on the show yeah. I, don't know. I see that yeah yeah because that's what it felt like it was so weird because like because it, 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 it was like they would each go back to their corners and get rehyped up like yep. yeah. Yeah. what are you doing <laughs> yeah they're cool and they're cut men <laughs> healing them up from their previous fight when i get you ready to go back out there rock <laughs> the exactly <laughs> like uh, and then like Orion and Lawrence, uh, we'll talk about after this segment. But then the the behind the scene, Orion's like, "Oh, there was all this bull crap." It's like, "Oh, but you were where, where was this energy out there? there? <laughs> where was this energy out there, sir?" <laughs> He's like, "I'm not bold enough to say that in front of her." <laughs> it was so like I was like, "This is ridiculous," but it, uh, it added to it. It did add to it. I'll, I'll give them that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, oh, also make sure y'all go subscribe to the, uh, or join the Facebook group. We are like Jason said, we are in there talking, commenting about things, talking about the episodes while it's on. So come join us as we talk about the, where are they now special next week? We talk about it as the episode is airing. And if you watch it on delay, you can go back to the thread and catch up and give your little thoughts. Um, so, and, and, well, listen, I'm sure once the season actually ends, and Emily comes like really comes out of the gate in social media. We talk about that as well because she yeah. she been in there enough. Like before the season ends, I'm sure once the season actually ends and they show whatever they are on the Where Are They Now special, she's gonna have more stuff, and we're probably gonna be talking about it in the Facebook group. Yeah, so go join oh this God. week. The password is I'm an eight point five. You're a six. <laughs> <laughs> so childish. Uh... And that's not even a big discrepancy. Like an 8.5 and a 6 can be together. Yeah, definitely. Like she, a, a, a bigger burn would have been she's like, I'm a 9, you're a 2. At least she was what? like, she was like very realistic in her score. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, last she's week, like, she's like, I'm, I'm a 12, you're I'm a 12, <laughs> he's a 2. She at least changed to make it more realistic this week. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Speaking of that, I saw TikTok and I wanted to see what oh, your answer would go. be. No. Here we go. TikTok corner. Okay. What... I'm here. I'm listening. I, I want to hear it. Okay. What do two and seven have in common? I don't know, Asia. Mm -hmm. What do two it's and seven have in It's not a joke. It's just common. a question. It's not oh. a joke. It's a question. Oh, it's that's a not question. a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. I thought it was a joke. I'll just try to go along with you. I'll just try to play along. <laughs> Not it's not a joke. Like that. I literally thought it was a joke. <laughs> no answer. No. I have no okay. idea. What are you... They're both numbers. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's, normally it's not I'm a joke. Y'all are making me laugh. It's not a joke. It was like the the point on TikTok was like this girl. She was like, "Yeah, I was in this thing," and <laughs> not just... why did Jason leave? <laughs> Because I got it. I don't know, Asia. Listen, that set this, up. <laughs> no, she was saying she took this test, and it, they asked her that, and she was like, "Think it's so hard," and so she was wondering what people, what other people say. And it's like it's so simple. They're numbers, but that didn't even come to our minds. I, I'm usually on your side with these TikTok <laughs> corners, Asia. I I truly am, because I'm usually like, "Yeah, I saw that one," or "No, I got to go look for real." But we. We could have done with that. I'm gonna okay, I'm gonna send it to you. Okay, maybe <laughs> the, oh, please, the it'll, stitch it'll is be funny. so much better when you send it to me. <laughs> <laughs> That'll make it all worth it. Oh my gosh. So, yes. Anyway, <laughs> let's talk about the reunion. Mm. 
<laughs> no, okay. What was funny about I, y'all? Now y'all making me have to explain it. Oh, now you explain no, it. No, no, no. <laughs> we understood. We understood no, the point. Okay. The girl <laughs> said that she was like, they're both numbers, and then this girl stitched it and was like, bust out laughing because she was like, her answer was they both go like this. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's a two and a seven. They're like leaning to this. Oh my gosh. Mari, Y'all go Mari, look at I'm gonna post it in the is Facebook Asia group. Okay. Is Asia I, okay? Mari, I'm gonna post it in the Facebook to, group. We have to get her some help. Oh, oh my no. gosh. People don't get I'm humor anymore. No. <laughs> Jesus. Anyway. You know, you, know, you know it's bad when Mari is on my side. You know <laughs> <laughs> what does this world come to? <laughs> it's just been too long. That's what it is. Uh yeah, let's that's, let's that's, talk about that's it. Let's talk about the reunion. Okay, so we had to keep going. We had to continue from Brennan and Emily. So they left us on that cliffhanger of her talking about rumors, plural. And so this whole thing just was, like, confusing. Because she said that she saw some texts where Brennan told Cameron and Austin that he wanted to have sex with her friend Lily then, and, and also, she saw that Brennan called Cam to go on a double date. And Kev is like, wait, who's Lily? She said, my ex-best friend. And we get a flashback <laughs> to Lily. <laughs> we I'm saw sure, this season. I'm pretty sure Lily's the one that was talking the most ish about her preseason. Like, you know, uh, maybe the, oh, but it's the dress shopping. Yeah. Like, they usually, yeah, the dress shopping. So uh, <laughs> that's not surprising. <laughs> We look. We've been talking about her friends the entire season for six. But we months. had, we had, I think in this when this one conversation we had that he wanted to have sex with uh, Emily's friend. He also mm-hmm. wanted to have sex with Claire's friend, and then they wanted to do the mm. double date thing. Right. <laughs> and I love, I love Emily. I saw some text messages when I uh, mistakenly went, <laughs> went looked at your the iPad. iPad. <laughs> right, 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 right. Mistakenly, it yeah. was left open uh-huh, on the yeah. text messages app. I just so happened to show to have had the iPad to show into your face to unlock the face ID, and it just happened to pop up. I, you can't blame me for that. I saw your iPad, and I was like, "Let me take this to Brennan. He needs it." And that's when I saw the text. Uh, so she's accusing him, or not accusing, but she's saying that she's seen these things. Right? She also says that. Um, he wanted to make out with her best friend. And so that's when he's like, okay, which is it? So then Kev asked her to come clean about the Australian. And so she's like, okay, an Australian kissed me at the bar. <laughs> like, no <laughs> big deal. <laughs> well, and then we find, we find yeah. out that she didn't want, to, she, she initially didn't come clean to Brennan about it. Yes. And mm-hmm. Emily says that Lily told... <laughs> Brennan about the Australian, and that's how he found yeah. out, which he denies. He says, No, it's not true. And Lou didn't tell me. Lou didn't tell me. She didn't tell me. <laughs> so there's there's so many accusations just being thrown all mm-hmm. over the place, and we're not stopping down to really dive deep into any of it. We're just we like, can't because they're throwing so much out there. I'm just like, Brennan, can you talk about these text messages? Like, is she just literally making this up in thin air like what is what is your comeback for that but we're just going fast and furious with the accusations you did this you did this yes and we're not talking about any of it and then i just found it so hilarious that emily's saying all this stuff that he did and i'm like yep but the guy you kissed in the the bar like that let's let's not throw stones in in a glass house exactly like (laughs) and her her i said throwing stones yeah her defense (laughs) is oh he kissed me do you, you really think that's gonna fly? Do you think it's gonna pass muster here? Like, what was uh, I supposed supposed to do? Move away? It's like, bro, did you press charges? Like, is there a police report? Like, what's going and, on? And then what was the hot tub? I was very confused just, about who said what. There were several times tub. a hot tub was referenced, and I had no right. idea what we were talking about. Because Claire okay. brought it up. Claire was like, "When I was in the hot tub, this happened." And I was like, "When I was were you so confused when about the hot was... tub, man?" So yeah, it was who some was story of saying what to who say what. Right. Apparently, Brennan said something while Claire. Maybe they were all in a hot tub. This wasn't aired. <laughs> and so something why, bad why put happened. That on my, but y'all, the, the the show chose to put this on my TV <laughs> and not explain it. So to me, it makes no sense why you would do that. I just I don't get it. I don't understand why confuse us like this TV show. Yeah. 
So, um, so Emily says that Lily told Emily that Brennan wanted to have sex with her. And uh, Kev was like, did you ask him about it? She's like, no, I didn't ask him about it. Why would I approach him with that? <laughs> okay, he's not the one you're married to at all. <laughs> <laughs> so um, she she said she would not have stayed with him as long as they did if they weren't still trying. Because Brennan is kind of trying to paint the picture that they were like, not that they were done, but it wasn't going to work out. And they both knew it. And so she's saying he really gave her false hope. And so because he was saying... <laughs> So I don't, I don't know about y'all, but I feel like I was able to read pretty pretty well that he was not in this for a marriage. He wanted a, he said they want he wanted to work on a friendship. He said to her multiple times throughout the season. I don't do y'all think he let her along? I I'm sorry, Asia. I, my thought process was he, he. I see where Emily it was kind of saying because he he it didn't seem like he ever said. I just want to not be in this marriage. It sounded like he was saying, I want to start at a friendship. Yes. And then we work on our friendship to lead to the marriage. Like, that's what I could see. That's what she was thinking. I mean, us having our bird's eye, we could clearly tell this man had checked out a while ago. But I just don't think his language was clear enough with Emily. And I also think Emily was looking for any little thing to try and save the marriage. You know, yeah. I think she was really, you know, wanting it to work out until she didn't want it to work out. And now she's trying to just burn it all to the ground. So I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I wasn't surprised when she said she felt led on. Yeah, I totally agree. I think she thought that the friendship was going to be the foundation yeah. And then they were there was only it was only up from here. Whereas he's like, no, the friendship is the only territory I want to be in. <laughs> that's where we max out, really, <laughs> sis. <laughs> you need it to be. Buddy old pal. <laughs> right. Start calling her bro. I don't know. Like there was nothing unless he would be like, unless he had decided to be direct. She was going mm -hmm. to think that, okay, there's still, like, we're still together. There's still yeah. a glimmer of hope. Because he said that he thought that they had the understanding that on decision day, it was going to be a yes to being friends and a no to being married. <laughs> that, that was the stupidest. <laughs> I... <sighs> yes to being friends, I, no to being married, sir. I think he, he would, that was yeah, when he was still on the track of, like, I want to make this look. Po as positive as I can mm -hmm. as possible. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say, I definitely just want to be your friend, though. Like, we can ha have a good friendship. I don't want to leave this animosity when he knows as soon as they get off that couch and leave that decision day, he wasn't ever going to talk to her again until a reunion or whenever. He he was legally obligated to talk to her. <laughs> yeah. So he said, he, he basically says that she didn't make it easy for him to leave because she she he says that she's told him that if he divorces her, then she's gonna make his life a living hell. And but see, right there, I'm like, so you're saying you definitely have something that she could use to make your life a living hell, is what you're telling me. So, I, if she has nothing to make your life a living hell, uh, when we're, the threat's not real, so so obviously, there's something there. I don't think she has anything, I think it's to the extent of like what she's doing. Like, we see later, she's like. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to find her and I'm going to warn her Yo, <laughs> like his current girlfriend. Got, <laughs> that was, that was on some stalker stuff. I was uh, like, okay, uh, we might need to get a restraining order. <laughs> uh, look, I was like, now this left. We have, <laughs> <laughs> we have gone left. This is, giving, this is giving some fatal attraction. We need to, sing, this is giving some single white female. We got to veer off to another path. This isn't working for you. Like, today. Emily, let's reel it back in, girl. Yeah, let's, let's, let's come back. Let's come back. Okay. It's, this, that was her theme. We, we, the whole, we, whole we were with you. We were with you. Emily, you're going a little too far. You're crossing the line. You're crossing Out the line. Outburst and all. We were with you. We were, we were there. <laughs> and then you went a little uh, Joe Goldberg left, on us. <laughs> I left that. Uh, I left Emily's side a while ago. I gotta say, I am smack dab, <laughs> She's not, like in the middle now. I'm like, I will I, say I posted, the after parties yes. when she had beef with Keisha's when I was like, okay. yeah. I mean, there's I a, mean, there's... 
Emily is just a like, let a chopper uh, spray type of gas. Yeah, she, she she go. she's going to put it off. see it later. Yeah, she's like, she's like, oh, you want something? <laughs> <laughs> I can make it sing. I can make it sing. <laughs> Oh, oh my goodness. So um You want some kid? You want some? <laughs> exactly. I was like, oh Kevin said I ain't the one or the two. <laughs> my oh, no, word. Oh boy. oh boy, yeah. Um so um so Kevin asked Brennan to explain. He was like, You tried to explain, like you didn't like all her negative comments. We get a flashback to the dinner scene. He was like, it just always brought his energy down. And she's like, sarcastically, I'm, yeah, I'm, apparently I'm the most unpositive person ever. And then she brings up like how, how can you be so negative if I acted the way that I did after my accident? And I was like, well, he thought this before the accident, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I think I think all this stuff with the after parties and with this reunion is is really giving a new light to, to probably some mm -hmm. stuff that was happening off camera, maybe making him feel this way as well. I was like, mm, mm -hmm. I don't know, Emily, you, you are kind of negative. Like, I, I'm kind of feeling the negativity from you, to be honest. Yeah, like I think it's just that, like, okay, she's not a Debbie Downer. No, it's just like she's not the most optimistic person around. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, I, I feel like she kind of sees it as like the extreme is what he's saying because she yeah. tells him like okay I, I she says she had she didn't hear any of this until he was spiraling at dinner i was like they'll have talked about this before mm -hmm. um but uh he was like look the negativity in full force <laughs> And it really just set her off. Like it's so hard when she's like, "I'm not negative," as she's sitting there being very as negative. The most one on the stage of yeah, of all ten people here, we can say yeah. you're the most negative at this point. Listen, it was uh, again. Yeah. <laughs> what's happening here? I know. Really? It's like she's not giving us much to work with. But <laughs> my my loctician had a great point. Okay. She said that this is Emily's first relationship ever. Mm -hmm. This is her also her first breakup ever. So like mm -hmm. she doesn't know she, this is like unknown territory for her and she's just like like you said anybody could get it. I just I am full <laughs> of rage and disappointment and everything all is all jumbled together and so then it's it's coming out with what we see. Yeah, it's unfortunate to have your first breakup be on reality TV in, in this type of way, uh, showing all your emotions. Um, it, it's very, it's very tough, and I, I will say I came out of this with a very different image of Emily. That's not a good one. So I, 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 it's rough. Yeah, I I feel bad about it, but I kind of agree. I was like, I Emily, this this did kind of feel like immature, like a, a very immature response to what was going on. And I think, and this doesn't uh, uh, take Brennan off the hook because everything that Brennan said just felt disingenuous. Like I was like, yes, it was, like everything out of his mouth. I was like, that boy well, I think, I think, we're, like, I, I think we're primed for that reaction. Right. I think we're yes. primed for that. Cause some of the stuff he was saying, I was I like, okay. Triggered her. Yeah, definitely. Because she's mm -hmm. probably heard some of the same type of, uh, monotone apology when he doesn't maybe he doesn't really mean it and he, he's just mm -hmm. saying it to make her feel a certain way so it, it it's tough I, I appreciate that Emily has a lot of emotions but there's a there's a thin line between being right and being obnoxious right it's just like yes mm -hmm. like don't be a sore winner it's like because then we yes. don't we don't like you because we're like yes yeah. you're right but you're 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 expressing it in much. such a way you're dragging that, it. yeah you're expressing it in such a way that makes me not like you now so I think that's that, that's rough. That's rough. Yeah, it. Yeah, because this part. next, I feel like this next part is where Brennan finally, for the first time, and you know, because I know we had an eight week experiment, we followed them again for another four months. So I don't know what <laughs> where in the timeline this reunion was compared to. Well, no, we know it was shot in December, and so their weddings were February ish. 
So and mm-hmm. this is like I feel like the first time in 2023, Brennan was honest with Emily. Mm-hmm. So he told her he just wasn't attracted to her. And she's like, oh, that's hard to believe. <laughs> he said, Ooh. she's like, we made out every day on the honeymoon. He's like, that's a lie because we only made out one time. She said, well, that's weird because everybody wants to make out with me. And then he Oof. goes, this is the delusion. <laughs> it's a 10 on the oofa scale. It's a 10 on the, <laughs> like, oh, oof, oof, oof. If we're losing the plot. Oof. <laughs> 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 it's like, somebody cut this segment. It's not looking good. Cut, cut her mic. Cut her mic. <laughs> Get her out of here. Kev, wrap it up. Because yeah. then she goes, I'm an 8.5 and he's a 6. <laughs> and she's like, I just hope you never treat a girl the way that you've treated me. He was like, you just couldn't let me go. I tried to leave so many times. <laughs> Which I, I would I don't say she, I wouldn't say she held his arm and said, don't go. You can't leave. But, mm-hmm. you know, he has two legs. He could have made that decision to be bold enough but he was so afraid of how she was going to feel which is nonsense which is bs yes. yeah yeah more trying to look like the good guy and put it on her um yeah at this point she was just going to be like nah uh nah uh like you know <laughs> and like, the, and the face, the, no, like oh, that was almost what it was Asia. the, the, yeah. the faces she was making is just like faces, uh, how old uh, are you bro like he says at one yeah. point he's like you're like a college girl i was like college i'm taking it back to preschool like <laughs> this is I was like outrageous. that's generous college yeah. that's what i'm telling you she was just like and and obviously this is language you would use for a kid but she was acting out because yeah. this is, she's going through this like like that's a big thing to deal with on national television. Your first breakup ever. Like, where do you turn? Not here, obviously. Not the yeah. not this reunion. She should have been as quiet as Austin and handled this. I don't know. But then we finally get to the oh, how are y'all doing now? Emily says she's in therapy twice a week. She said Brennan and should try it. My therapist Claire says I'm doing a great job. Oh. <laughs> Right. <laughs> She's like, we talk. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what they should have said at the beginning when they're like, oh, how often do y'all talk? Oh, we talk all the time. I'm neighbors with Becca. I see Claire twice a week. Um, <laughs> we're like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Me and Claire said, have, a, have a session twice a week. Like, right. What do you mean? What, hmm. That would be hilarious, though, if Claire was a therapist. I would, uh, yeah. it would explain so much. Oh, man. <sighs> And so uh, Brennan, so he's in a happy relationship. He says their communication is great. And Emily's like, well, I hope I find her so I can warn her because I'm worried for this girl. It's like, that was all crazy. Throughout, all throughout I'm sorry. Season, yeah, yeah that, that was nuts. That was a little much. Uh, I, I all don't like saying season, that word, but. <laughs> yeah, all throughout the season, we've seen this clip of Brennan and uh, some woman in a in a bar type setting and Emily walking away from said bar. So I think that's going to be the where they now special. I think for some reason Brendan and his new girlfriend are going to be interacting with Emily. Please no. That's not. Yeah. Oh gosh. <laughs> I'm I, I'm scared. You can't handle so watching fun. that. When when she said like the, this was like so petty. Like <laughs> Kevin's like, oh, so how are you doing? But it's like, I'm in a new relationship. I'm happy. Uh, what did you learn? And he's trying to say what he learned. And she's like, oh, really? Oh, I feel sorry for the girl. I, I'm going to warn her. And I'm like, this is a red flag. Emily says, I'm going to find her and I'm going to warn her. I was like, Emily, like, please. Like, bro, like, that's not a threat. That's a promise. Like, no, I, <laughs> yeah. She's I was like, like I will track down all of her social media. Yeah. To get this message to her. I'm going to write a letter to her home. Why would you do that? Like you. Because 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 think about it. We we know this because we've been through breakups. Right. Girl. And you know that you just move on. But she's like she is. Like if that that's something I haven't done since I was 12. Like <laughs> the, other, the other person. Right. That's well, when that's you like, learn. Oh my God. This is. I don't know, man. That was that that took me over. I was like, Emily, girl. Uh, I pull know. It back. I was so glad that the segment was over. About to be exactly. over, yeah. Well, Brennan told her, he said he didn't want to be with her. And he she just kept holding him hostage. She was like, America's gonna believe me, no offense. We're watching this. <laughs> 
but I the, I literally wrote I believe her over him, but like this is weird. <laughs> like, it's, like, really, it's really going to agree with me. It's really given that guy. What's that guy's name from Love Is Blind? Uh, was it Matt or something? He's like America loves an underdog. Like uh, yeah. America's gonna, <laughs> like that's what it was good. Like okay, Emily, I think you're uh, overestimating your appeal here. Whenever you say that. So this is right. So Brennan is kind of like over Emily at this point because he's like, this is not a reality TV show to him. He's just a human and she's trying to make him feel like a piece of dirt. Please just drop it. Um, she said, like, I won't drop it. He said, you got to grow up. You're 30. You're literally a college girl. And Kevin's just like, look, everyone is to blame here. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Kevin was just, he lost control about, what was it, like five minutes in? And has mm -hmm. not been able to get it back since. <laughs> just... What well, was It was this segment, right? He's trying to cut it, and they just will not let him cut the cut yeah. the segment at all. It's like, what do I, like, they, they have literally held, held Kevin hostage at this point. And they will not let him move on. <sighs> So then we go to the break, like the little, you know, back behind the scenes. And Austin, oh, maybe his coffee is hitting him weird. I mean, he doesn't know what's going on. He goes to the bathroom. He's like, oh, I just got to leave so I can rest up. He, he's like, and then he's in the elevator. He's like, what can you do with a stomach bug? <laughs> like, I believed you until that moment. <laughs> <laughs> These men have a weak constitution. Was all of this like filmed in a day or was it two days? I could not I think it tell. was one day because they were so shocked about his no beard. And so he yeah. so he just went and lay down for like a few hours? Like Yeah. He went, went took a little nappy down, nap. Got up, was like, you know what I should do right now? Shave off my beard. What? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he had it. He had it. Tell me, hey kid, you go lay down. Um, anyway, so now we get to what? What is always the shortest segment in all these reunions <laughs> is the men's get together because usually they have nothing to say. Um, this was a little longer this this time around because everyone's defending themselves. The guys get together minus Austin, of course. Uh, so Kevin says, "Listen, I know you guys think that the ladies have had." all the say so far but this is your time to get everything out brennan kicks it off he's listen you can want to be in a successful marriage but not like the person you're with it's like okay that <laughs> that, that makes sense that like true. Yeah. he wanted he wanted he wanted a good marriage he just did not like his partner um he says he did not come into this with bad intentions he says you know other shows you can get away with having bad intentions this one you just can't I so said, what is the difference between this show and any other show? Like, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can have He's... bad intentions on any know, like dating show or something. Yeah, like, what yeah. Do you mean? You're not. Did he mean like, like? Did he mean like, yo, this is Lifetime. This is not Netflix or ABC. No one's watching this. Well, <laughs> he he meant... <laughs> no, he meant because like, I, I what I assumed was because you have to go marriage? through all the psycho evals. You have to go through all the matchmaking. You have to go like above and beyond to like really want this. Um, however, I just really thought it was interesting that they don't mention at all that like all of the men were recruits. Like, yeah. didn't we didn't we confirm that at the beginning of the season? Like uh -huh. all of the men were recruited, and now we're shocked that <laughs> yeah, like, but none I mean, I don't of think, them were ready for marriage. I don't think this that's something that is unique to this show. I think that's a lot that's of true. these dating but this, reality shows. What is it? But I, but I will give men being recruited though. Look, I will give Brennan that they are married. Like, okay, you could do that with anything that like people are dating, mm -hmm. but to to say okay till death do us part at an altar mm -hmm. i would feel like you need somebody who actually wants to be married and and saw mm -hmm. that for themselves before mm -hmm. like you were reached out to <laughs> and maybe watch a little bit of the show that you were going to be on which he obviously didn't do because he's like he says listen i thought this was basically just free matchmaking i didn't think that you know my life would be dissected and picked apart like this yeah i mean Dude, on TV, have you sure. ever heard of any reality show? Like, <laughs> this isn't new to the genre of TV. This isn't the first reality TV show. Yeah. If you if you didn't think this is going to be the the case, you are just naive beyond belief. Um, yeah. you know, 
Kevin does a whole spiel of like, you know, marriage is about building your life with a partner. Obviously, you aren't happy with your partner. Um, he does ask, you know, should you have been more transparent from the beginning? Brendan says, yes, definitely. He says it wouldn't have lasted as long as it did if I was more transparent, but I was trying to protect her feelings, which to me, anytime he says that, it totally invalidates anything he says before yeah. and afterwards because that's just a lie. He he mm-hmm. wants to protect his image. He did his not want to look, come yeah. off looking like the bad guy. Anytime he says this, it totally invalidates everything else. He says, yeah, I want, I, I was trying to protect her feelings, but it just ended up hurting us both. Uh, Kevin asks how he feels about, uh, how Brennan feels about being called a liar all the time by the ladies. He says, well, I mean, listen, every time you bring up their stories, every time you challenge their story, it falls apart. So who's the one lying? He says, you know, it was difficult for me because I was forced to do things I didn't want to do. And, you know, he says he, he, he remembers kissing her one time at the honeymoon, just once. And he says all the girls' stories aren't adding up. Um, he knows what he did, and he knows that he isn't lying. Look, it can't. Every I was watching, so I watched this episode with my brother, and we were talking about it. And shout out to him because he listens to us. Um, Hello? He and he. Okay, so everything can't be a lie. Like I believe mm-hmm. guys have been lying. The girls have been lying. I don't think a hundred percent of either side has been telling the truth. Or has been all lying. Like there has uh-huh. to be something that's, and that's why it's hard to suss out because mm-hmm. they're saying so much. Yeah, and guess what? It be because you guys have been hiding stuff on camera. We don't know what's a lie and what's truth yeah. <laughs> because y'all have been doing this this game. Like, so yeah, it's gonna be a whole bunch of he said, she said, and the the men do not come out looking good here the women drag it but it's just like i could not believe i i literally wrote oh oh brother to this men section like <laughs> oh brother y'all are re- okay sure all right brennan okay <laughs> Br- like, bring honestly. me bring me the lie detectors bring them out bring uh, more yes, out here yes get it hooked up let's go <laughs> yes that's what this reunion needed brennan, lie you test. said you only <laughs> kissed emily once on the honeymoon we gave you a lie detector. <laughs> the lie detector test determined that was that a lie. Was <laughs> Emily gets up. I told Absolutely. you. I told you. I told you. <laughs> right. Brennan gets up, like, running okay, around backstage. Two times. <laughs> he, starts, he starts running around backstage. He's like, ah, oh, no. <laughs> <That's laughs> <what happened. laughs> <laughs> falling on the couch. Right there. That is entertainment. Uh, that's what needed to be done. Give him some truth serum. Give him a lie detector test. Something to get the real truth out here. Uh, so. Uh, Talk turns to Onion. Time to talk to Onion now uh. about his contentious relationship with Lauren that he has now. Onion says, well, listen, I just hope that we could be civil with each other. I was a lot of push and pull for a long time, and we just kept missing the mark in terms of communication. But he hopes the best for her and wants us to be as civil as possible. Thankfully, that's all we have talked to Onion about for right now. <laughs> so we, we then talk to Cameron. He says, Cameron, the ladies are saying that you just tapped out. And says, oh, yeah, I tapped out, huh? I tapped out. He says, well, let me tell you something. The doctors told me that my condition wasn't hereditary. It was stress-related. Basically, a broken heart. And it was the night that we announced the divorce that my heart started to flutter. And he says, you want receipts? I'll show you receipts. I'm like, ooh, give me the text messages. Give me the text messages. What does he pull out of his stupid little pocket? A EKG printout of where his heart stopped three times. They had to bring him back. Mari, you are in the medical field. Yes, please. I want you to give us a little bit of background about what is going on yes. here. And uh, if you can clear anything up for us, we would greatly appreciate it in this, in this world. Because you know, my notes. I, know you, I was yes. like, sir, I know if you, you don't stop it. And, and he had an AFib, which is his 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 heart started to go uh, be arrhythmic, arrhythmic. Like it, it, it got kind of like out of sync so it, it wasn't on the normal rhythmic pace and i don't know why you would go back from saying th- throughout the season oh is a hereditary thing to oh now the doctors say it's stress related like you mm-hmm. can't there there's so many different reasons for afib that it could be anything so him just kind of like lying when it suits him was weird but he, he literally, he literally said 
he literally said on decision day in front of the experts that Claire did not cause this. This was something that exactly. was always going to happen. He said that exactly. on decision day in front of the experts. So exactly. So so now all of a sudden it's like, oh, I got a broken heart, and that's what happened. No, it 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 happened, but it just means your heart is out of sync. So they will shock you to they'll shock you to get the, your heart back into rhythm. His heart didn't stop. It like was, he, he, he wasn't he wasn't chilling one rhythm. Yeah, he wasn't chilling one day, and all of a sudden he drops dead, and like we gotta bring <laughs> yeah. it back to life. They come with the defibrillators, like cocoon, like this is where they hit me and, with the defibrillators. Right, I feel like this is where he came into for a procedure. Yeah, he came in for a procedure. They did whatever they had to do to get his heart back into rhythm. Is that? Yeah, right? and that's what like people, you know, because we see the medical shows where it's like people are flatlining and then they try and shock them, but that's not what mm. the defibrillators are for. Like you, you have to have a heartbeat in order to kickstart the heart for the defibrillators to actually work. So shocking somebody who has a flat line does not help, but because of TV shows, that's what we all think. So, mm -hmm. and it's it's just a small shock. They just shock your heart it back into rhythm and then they monitor you. It, you know, it happens, you know, and, yeah, and he, then he saying, definitely, go, <laughs> he definitely yeah, wants just, to think somebody's yeah. going clear and then go, right. like, that's, that's what he wanted something happened. He says, so it's yeah, so I found a way out. <laughs> we'll never, yeah, we'll totally. never truly know why it happened. What well, because mm. again, there's so many causes for it. But like he was literally just being overly dramatic here. He was yeah, literally being so dramatic. So he's being a little like, yeah. So I you could say I found a way out, huh? Like, okay, all right, all right, Cameron. Uh Kevin does <laughs> I'm so Cameron glad so I have that context because I did not that makes a lot of sense. I'm sitting yeah, up here taking camera for his work. I'm like, wow, his heart stopped three times. He said his heart stopped three times. Your heart did not stop, sir. No. <laughs> uh, Kevin asked Cam if he learned anything through this. Cameron says, you know, I learned to advocate for myself at all times. He learned not to give his trust freely and to make people earn his trust and to use his head more than his heart. So uh, we, we now turn to Michael. Uh, Kevin says, so Coley is like a breath of fresh air to this season. I said, really? <laughs> okay if you say so kevin um michael says yeah chloe's demeanor really put me at ease and uh you know i was worried i was gonna have some residual trauma from the first marriage but uh but you know her demeanor really gave me confidence that uh there would be no residual trauma from the first marriage uh kevin says so a lot of people were saying that the first wedding was all stage he says no i know people think that and it, it did look weird but his emotions were definitely real in the moment and you know he wanted to maintain strength but he just he just had to break down those, in those moments right after the wedding uh kevin so kevin says so so i want to ask all of you what good are you going to walk away with this uh experience from i think we asked this question about three times throughout the whole um yes. throughout the whole year. what did you learn like Kev, they're out of they're out of answers at this yeah. point. Well, listen, well, Brennan's answer. <laughs> Brennan's answer. He says, "I I've learned that there's a way to be honest and respectful while telling your truth." I said, "Okay, that's something. That's definitely something because that's what he didn't seem to get throughout the whole season. That he mm -hmm. there was a way to tell Emily what you really felt without." ending her world as he kept saying right. like I, I just didn't want to destroy her i didn't want to like you know really really just give it to her like there's a way to tell her how you're feeling without being a, a d-bag about it so i feel mm -hmm. like that was a good lesson to learn if he's truly learned that lesson um kev says uh says he knows it just doesn't work sometimes it's okay that it doesn't work it's okay to express yourself that it's not going to work but if you ball it up it builds animosity uh, and then you know and it's not it's not good for anybody uh, cameras go down and we find out that cam we got another one down cameron not feeling great it's a heart related thing apparently some uh, i've maxed out on my medication i can't take anymore i'm like, not feeling good the guy's just like all right well i mean listen man if it's gonna cause you a heart attack it's just not worth it this i mean i i i have been attacked this season for joking about this heart condition i know that he has some heart thing i'm just i'm, I'm still looking at him like <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It feels Mar, like you... this whole environment would not be the place for somebody <laughs> in That's the condition that, that the he brink. has described. Yeah, yeah like he's so on the brink that just the, the littlest of things will send him over the edge. Mar, is there gonna is there like a, a prolonged thing for this, or is, I mean, is he talking about his butt, or what is what is he doing here? No, I mean like 
yes, you should not be stressed out if you have a, a heart condition. You know what I'm saying? But also, like, is he using it at convenient times? Y yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, come on. Clearly. So, I mean, it's Cameron. It's like, you look at you running away like you usually do. Like, go ahead. Yeah, you know, I, I'm I like, know, I, there's nothing else to say. He just runs, and yeah. we said it. I, I know <laughs> I mean, the heart condition is real. I know it is. I I don't doubt his heart condition, but it just feels like sometimes he's definitely being disingenuous with with some of this. So it's tough he's to gauge. It. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely tough to gauge what is and what isn't real in the situation. But I was like, we're about was to the... be down to two guys if they keep yeah. dropping like this. Mm -hmm. It's like it's just like the season; they just keep dropping. <laughs> Like Orion out of nowhere. Uh, oh yeah, I got a headache. Oh, I gotta go. I can't talk to uh, Lauren during our segment. <laughs> right. Got the vapors. Um, but yeah, that was the men's segment. Uh, Did you? Nonsense. You didn't say what Lauren said in that break, right? What did Lauren, so Lauren said? said? None of these men would have gotten a second glance. She said these oh, low budget yeah. Shein men. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> these Timu. Timu Ming got you crying. I, <laughs> I wrote that down. Like, I, just, I thought it was a different uh, place in the in the show. Who knows at this no, point? I had, so it, many I had it right breaks. there. Oh, but that was yes. that was good. That was good. <laughs> Lauren, was Lauren like, gave it to me. I said, good. Lauren, don't be don't say all. You still trying to Michael? Okay. <laughs> oh, brother. oh brother. I'm rooting for that at this point. I have one love story this season. No. Give it up. <laughs> None of these yeah. people are ready for any relationship. None of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so they return from break. Um, and you know, br backstage, Brennan's like, Yeah, you, you just can't go out there. They go rest and then maybe revisit it when we start talking to the experts. And then uh Emily tells Claire, stop being ne negative, give your bad B energy. Cause uh they're about to Go back out you're, and talk to the guys bad, again. Yeah, you're a baddie. You look beautiful. I'm like, y'all are... Mm. <laughs> They're definitely hyping them up. It's, the hype mm -hmm. is real. Right. So th this seems like a little, I don't know, like a, a just getting a pulse on the way things are right now because they're going to get them back together again after the experts. So this really felt unnecessary. But uh, Kevin is like, all right, Becca, Austin's not here, so what would you like to say? The floor is yours. Now's your time <laughs> to talk trash. Go yeah, ahead. Right. Get it all can, out. Can I just say, I, you know, uh, I listened to you guys talk about part one. And be poor Becca, she in, she's barely in part two here because she just looks broken. And I feel so, so bad for her. Like, I know that she still has to. I'm, I'm still trying to get over the whiplash of how great of a couple it seemed like they were to how it ended this way and I, I just don't know what didn't work between the two of them other than a lot of the pressure from these other cast members I, I, honestly you know I get but that I don't I, know I feel like they had a lot of issues beyond that we had the yeah. religion we had the intimacy that just but then the it's like I think I saw this in the Facebook group like was it that Claire and Cameron tried the religion issue and it didn't work for them. So then right, Becca and Austin they, tried to try it, and that's why it never came back it. up again. Yeah, uh, the, like that's the, the you said I was going to hell thing. That seemed really real. I don't know if that <laughs> that could have been staged. <laughs> I, I don't, don't know. know. Yeah, it, it's, it's, when you were here, when you were here last, Mari, we all gave them fives. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and I mean they they were a good solid four or five for most of the week. If anybody should feel like really like just head turned and betrayed it, it it's becca because they had such a good thing for so long and then they had a really really rocky ending and they still at the end of the day said yes on decision day and it lasted just a few hours you know what i'm saying and like i think austin definitely um did some things that was like not good and i i, <laughs> I agree that if he was so caught up on the cameras that how is it supposed to how are you supposed to know what's real but i'm also kind of like i'm wondering i'm wondering if the pressure wasn't coming from both sides 
would they have been able to work it out? You know, if the women were, weren't pushing back and to be like, oh, F him. If the men were like optics pushing, you know, Austin to, to just try and look good on camera, if, if it would have been different, you know what I'm saying? Like, like if, this if was they were a in a different cast. Situation. Yeah. But what, I don't know. It kind of makes me nervous about them. Or like, like it makes me rethink their relationship because next week on the preview, we see a hint at, um, I mean, they could definitely be painting this picture all wrong, but Austin's roommate, Chloe, making a comment oh, like, right. oh, maybe there's something there. I forgot about and that. And I'm like, if that's the case, Austin was never available. That's <laughs> He's been true. living with yep, this girl right. forever. I forgot about that. So, yeah, I don't know. very unfortunate. I, there are only hope, and they like, they were the light, and then they died out like <laughs> quick. Okay, like three quarters of the way through, I was like, what "Yeah, it was is such a happening? dramatic it's, downturn." It was so dramatic, yeah. yeah it, that's the thing. Like, if it, it, it felt like, and again, this is how we know we completely missed something because mm -hmm. they were hiding it from us. Because one minute it, it felt like they were great, and the next minute it was like just completely sh like shitville for them. So I, I'm, yeah. yeah, we will never know. This is so unfortunate. This season is. This should be the lost season. Like, we don't know what really happened. So. It feels like it almost was because it took so mm -hmm. long to come out. They should have just said, all right. Mm -mm. <laughs> I would have been like, okay. <laughs> if we knew as, this was the outcome. As the lone defender of this season. <laughs> right. Oh, God. I will say, I'm glad we got it. Because uh, the mess the mess was messy. The mess, you. The mess huh? was messy. Is, is it in the top 10, like, Married at First Sight seasons for you? Only seventeen. So. I know. Yeah. That's a Is it in the top? Oh yeah, yeah. Only seventeen. Um, yeah, I think it's in the top ten. I give it a top. Also, 10. also that part where they were like, where they asked Michael if the woman running away was staged. It's like, no, that's not what we meant by stage. Like, we we know she ran away. Like, right? <laughs> we, we meant, did y'all did y'all stage it for the cameras in a sense of making a standing come out and reject him? And because I, I'm still under Look, that. Uh, we did. We me. do have it on good authority that it okay. was not a production assistant going in and standing in. But that really? was all we were told that it wasn't a production assistant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, it was a production what? assistant. It was a producer. <laughs> and, I don't know. That's what that means. We dressed up Montre in a wig. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe in two weeks, will the mystery girl X will will step forward? Because I needs to know. I needs to know. She's like, Thank I've you. moved to Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's so much legal tape uh, wrapped around this thing. We will never ever find out that that I. But it's not. Like, we won't be mad at you. Just come out. I come could sleep you. easier at night if we knew. Yeah. Listen, we we've been saying, after seeing this season, you do, you made the right decision. <laughs> yeah. Right. You, Listen, yes, we take that was all the perfect extra strategy. We take all anonymous sources. We yes. will take your. We will keep you confidential. Mm -hmm. We just, just if you want to slide into DMs and let us know, we will we will take that information. Whoever's out there listening to this, listening. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, so this this uh this second men and women segment. So Becca just says she's ready to like continue into the next chapter. She doesn't have anything to say. Michael does want to say that he appreciates Chloe for sharing the hindsight. <sighs> oh, brother. <laughs> for sharing the hindsight this brown, that she this had. brown knows her this is like... he wants to reiterate Jason <sighs> his apology to her okay he 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 realized he never gave them a platform to find a solution Michael th this is this is the time for the teacher's pet to shine he's like this this is my moment I just I, I just want to apologize again Chloe for anything I did and I just want to I just want to apologize should I give it a platform like oh God, God, and Lauren God, said Chloe. that's what reflection sounds like yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like oh thank you so much future future uh, <laughs> Michael <laughs> future Mr. Michael <laughs> Jason, you're such a Michael hater. It's my eyes astounding. rolled all the way up my head. I said no. Astounding, sir. The one person who's, you know, kind of semi doing good. I mean, he's decent. I mean, again, the bar is <laughs> in hell. The bar, but the bar is in another world. Yeah, you know, oh, leave gosh. him alone. 
Um, Brennan, he said, you know, he feels they all had good intentions being there, but ultimately their relationship didn't work. He does want to take responsibility for not expressing his full truth. And he said he should have been more transparent, which is, this is true. You really should have. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Emily says, I appreciate that, but I don't believe you. And I don't think it's genuine. Oof, <laughs> Oof Emily, take, take, take the, like, take the win. Take the, she's just. Like, it could have been like, a, as you should like be. <laughs> he says, look, look take a, this is the toxic energy she brings. Or take it graciously. Don't prove him right by being negative. Like, that's, that's uh -huh. the wrong move. The wrong move. She appreciates him acknowledging whatever he thinks he's taking accountability for. I was like, oh my, you the only one out here fighting. Everybody else is like just making their statements. And she said, everybody I'm else done. is trying to get, everyone but Emily and Claire are just trying to get through this now. They're trying, yeah. they're saying what they need to say to get through this filming. And Emily and Claire will not let it go. Um, right or wrong, they just won't let it go. Yeah. And and this was the moment where I'm like, it, yeah, this being the moment, and then it again, I was just like, okay, y'all keep bringing this stuff up, and I'm like, but what, what is, what is this going to accomplish? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> nothing's yeah. Getting resolved. Nothing's getting, nothing is getting, nothing is getting resol resolved. Nothing is getting mm -hmm. brought out. It's yeah. just more talking at this point. I well, I Lauren that. felt Lauren felt how we felt because even Claire is like we felt like we were teammates, and then you know it just created this rocky foundation. Lauren's like, no shade to anyone, but sometimes you just gotta let that ish go. <laughs> like, thank you. Just move. Just on. realize you realize you won't get the apology you deserve. I said, oh, there you go. Then out That's what of it is. then it was just like Claire was trying to explain whatever. Emily's like. Why I just want to know why y'all don't believe Claire. Like the people just keep digging and digging, and, and and Kevin's like, "Who's digging?" She's like, "Like you." She's like, what? "Well, now this was chopped all to hell." I don't know what this conversation really was. I don't know what really took <laughs> place here, it? but mm. there were so many segments put together. I was like, "This this doesn't flow like this naturally." That but makes this was, sense. This was quite something. Yeah, because she just starts now. She starts, she starts yelling nowhere. at Kevin. Yes. And she said, like, uh, Claire felt she was like, it's just uh, she's being disrespected and dismissed. And then she's like, Does that not translate to you? To Kevin, Kevin was like, You yelling at me does not change anything. I'm not gonna get rattled. You disrespected the show and the people watching us. And every he said, Everybody was part of the deception. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I said, yeah. Kevin, Kevin, <laughs> Kevin. Now, Asia, you've been disrespecting Kevin for the last 50, 11 seasons. <laughs> How? 50, 11 seasons. <laughs> you said you don't like Kevin as the host. You I, said no, this and that. I, I did not say, fine, clip it. Where did I say that? I didn't say I disliked it. Kevin. I just said, there, there, everybody can be critiqued. Mm-hmm. You'd be critiquing pretty hard, but how did you feel? How did you feel Kevin's performance was in this reunion? I feel Kevin did as best as he could with how out of control this entire cast was. I feel like I what Kevin did what a good job. Yeah, like I feel like it could have easily just gone off the rail. I mean, it you know well, it did. <laughs> <laughs> it could have it could have been worse, even worse. But I feel like he was able to be like, look. Okay, let's mm -hmm. try to let's try to talk about our futures. Yeah, but why did he go back to Brennan again after this? I was like, oh god. I know, I know. That was wild because he but goes. Maybe Jason said it was chopped up. So he's like, Brennan, why didn't your relationship work? <laughs> Brennan's <laughs> like, well, we were a massive mismatch early on. First, I thought she was a pretty girl, but then her friend says she gets ghosted. She has one night stands. And she she says she doesn't know where her money goes. And he was just turned off. And all during this, of course, Emily has her rebuttals. She's just like, I don't, I don't get ghosted, whatever. And so he was like, he just held his negative feelings from her. And he was afraid to say his piece. Oh, and I he think, let it out. Right? Then. This, is, <laughs> this is the most truthful this man has ever been in this yep. whole process. Yeah. Yep. This was it. This was it. Box this up at night one. Deliver it to Emily. This was the reason. All like, in a dang, nutshell. You were done at the wedding. 
at the that, wedding though at the reception it. though at the reception <laughs> y'all kind of called it though like once he found out about the one i said i i i he always got the thought ick. yeah mm-hmm. i always thought that what probably turned him off was like him finding probably finding out like her sexual history or something like that he seems like one of those guys which is very talking judgmental about, like, body count or whatever yeah yes. extremely judgmental, judgmental yes. and a, a dick move for sure yeah and but if that's how he felt he should have said that. Should have said it from yeah. the jump. Could have saved mm-hmm. everybody two months. How do you high. think she would have received it if he had though earlier on? I think she would have told him about himself, just like she is doing, doing here now. Right? Yeah, because yeah. now it. But now it seems like her. A lot of her hurt is from being like led on, and it's right. from like from him giving this perception that they had a chance. But like, what if he did say it earlier on, like Lauren, Lauren and Orion type of early. Right, where he didn't lead her on. Mm-hmm. I think she has no filter. I think she was going to give it to him, just like she is now. She's like, well, if you don't like me for me, then you can step off or something like that. Like, I think that would have been her attitude. If she, if he had come at her with this judgmental nonsense, like, mm-hmm. you know, you you have too and many one nice fans. Oof. <sighs> yeah. And I think the show is getting away with murder here right now, right? Because the show is like, See, it wasn't our fault. It was their fault. It, <laughs> it was their fault that they were um, that they were hiding stuff from us. It wasn't the experts picking these horrendous men or these horrendous <laughs> people and mismatching them. It's not that. Also, we definitely didn't kind of probably more than likely push our thumb on the scale to keep Brennan in that relationship because at that point we only had one other couple <laughs> <laughs> like I like I would not I you could you wouldn't be able to knock me over with feather if you told me that the producers <laughs> try to tell Brennan to like you know maybe let's just stay so that we can you know get through the decision day maybe we'll give you a bump something like that you know what I'm saying like because at this point I think Brennan missed his chance because once Lauren once Michael had a runaway bride Lauren O'Ryan called it off on He's day like, two. Dang it! <laughs> yes, Claire and Cameron were done by the second week. They they weren't. Are we for real? Do we really think that um, Maths would have let Brendan and Emily like legit go, and they only focus on it's on? Um, yeah, I could definitely uh, see that uh, being some like about how, some behind the scenes where he's having talks to producers like I, I'm I'm about to go I'm about to just be done and they're like no 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 we can't we can't do that I'm a, I'm calling Montre down here he's gonna come talk to you he's gonna he's gonna, you're gonna get you some extra gift cards or whatever they pay them with uh you're gonna get an extra <laughs> little stipend in your check like we'll, we'll do whatever it takes to to keep you on the show please please don't go don't go we cannot have just Becca and Austin here and like, I wonder if it was like a race between like Cameron and Brennan of who's gonna be able to who's gonna get to quit first, and Cameron mm-hmm. beat him to it. He's like, damn yep. it, and he's like, oh my heart. <laughs> so they're like, hey, we gotta like, we gotta go with that guy. <laughs> oh my goodness, come to join Elizabeth. <laughs> yep, <laughs> there that. Um, and so after Brennan is honest. He said, uh, Emily is crying at this point, mm-hmm. and she just says she wishes he would have told her these things. She's not going to apologize for being her. Oh, Ryan, unprompted. Yo, just, who, just, who asked him? To, who asked this man to speak? Who this asked, is like, just, this is just hard to hear. And it's feeling really heavy for me. Chloe was like, let's be real. This sucks. And this is a te- she's like, this is a testament to just being uh, authentic because this is awful. Yeah, saying y'all playing all these little games. Look where you got it. Me and me and Michael are civil. We can sit on the same couch. <laughs> Onion is the most is the person with the most to say that no one had asked him to speak at all. Like, what? Who are you again? Where did you come from? Ugh. As as someone as Emily said last night, you were here for two days and got the most to say. <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah. Sit in your sit in your corner and be quiet. And this is the part where I was like, oh, that was a great wrap up. I looked out it was like 50 <laughs> minutes and a whole hour. Left. I was like, oh, okay, never mind. Sorry, right. What do you mean? You didn't want to see the flashback to all the fun moments? <sighs> no. I said, this is not the reunion for that. We could have done without that. <laughs> we don't need a blooper back, reel. They came back and everyone was like, <laughs> 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 They see, 
It wasn't all negative. Yeah. <laughs> like two oh. minutes worth of good moments. It's wait. <laughs> you just had Emily bawling her eyes out. And you're like, wait, <laughs> but y'all laugh sometimes, right? Uh, time to have some yucks, y'all. <laughs> Let's cheer, let's cheer Emily up and see and, <laughs> and look at the times she and Brennan actually laughed a couple times together. Oh, right. And then, oh, 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 Brennan, what was that you were cooking? <laughs> it was pizza. <laughs> I just right. love I just would love that they're having the whole <laughs> that whole montage. You just see a little picture in picture of Emily just sobbing <laughs> in, her, in her hands. She's rolling her eyes. I, on the floor. I'm sorry. If I despise the person over there, the last thing I want to do is see moments of us giggling when I was just in the dark. <laughs> like, no. Oh, that should have been, oh, yeah. Hilarious. That, that should have been chopped. Read the room, y'all. <laughs> um, God. Oh, but yes, that was it for the second Men and Women segment. How did I get stuck with the onion and Lauren segment? Um, <laughs> so we get we get Lauren and Onion. Kind of says, "How are y'all doing?" Lauren says, "She's really been really great. She's been traveling, seeing family, getting back to her everyday life." And she says, "Yeah, I've also been getting back to my normal life as well." Uh, Kevin asks, "So, so Onion, what attracted you to Lauren?" Says, you know, her smile. She had great teeth. Just keeps going on and on about her teeth. I said, "Okay, that's interesting. She has cool teeth. Oh. That's great." Uh, so Kevin says, Lauren, what were you looking forward to in a marriage? She says, you know, sharing fun times, growing the relationship, getting to do the, the, the good and the bad together. So we get a flashback to the conversation on the honeymoon about taking sex off the table. Now, we don't talk about the inciting incident between Lauren and Onion of uh, the slur. I'll say that. Um, mm -hmm. I thought it was very interesting that they didn't bring that up at all. Um, no. Do that was I a think, like. I forgot about that too. No, no, I, I just I was like, like the show. Nope, I was like, oh, they didn't bring up the slur thing. Maybe because o Orion realizes that it was stupid and it wasn't that big of a deal that he then blew up into a big deal. And then let's be real that 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 this comment about the sex thing is what probably really prompted all of all of everything mm -hmm. else that followed. Yeah, I mean, but the slur was the inciting incident. It really started them on a down yeah. on a downward path. And I would have appreciated hearing him talk about that moment and seeing if there is any any other reflection he's done in the on that moment. You know, six but, months since then. But remember what y'all said? It, like that was the I think that was the moment where he chose it to be the inciting incident. You know what I'm saying? Like, like yeah, that was he the did. moment. Yeah, because the 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 first moment with the the sex thing and then she's like no you're you know you're judging me for this and he was trying to be like no i wasn't you know they were going back and forth about yeah. that and then they had the the um the talk about the slur to, and all of that yeah to get himself out of the sex conversation exactly. he, he rolled it back to like remember when back. you called me yes. this uh, remember yeah, you called he me this though back. Yes, but, you're right, you're but right. he yeah. did he did have a problem with it at the time he did bring it up and it was an issue for them at the time True. But he did he did use it to get out of the marriage pretty much. Um, yeah. But yeah, we, so mm -hmm. we're, we're talking about the we're talking about the sex conversation and how you know what was the what, what was up with that? Because so, so I mean, why did you have that reaction to Lauren saying, uh, you know, for those that don't remember, didn't watch, uh, Lauren said she had had sex two months uh, prior to their wedding, and Onion had a big problem with that because he felt like they were deep enough into the process that he should have been what she was thinking about and she shouldn't have been. Uh, you know, having relations with anyone else. So uh, Kevin says, why did you have that reaction? And he mm -hmm. says, you know, actually, I can't recall my thoughts in that moment. <laughs> I can really Onion don't know. Now. Come mm -hmm. on now. He says, he can't recall his thoughts in the moment. He says, he says he had an expectation when the process started, there would be no one else but their spouses and that he was coming to her as his full self. And he kind of wanted her to be that way too. Kevin rightly calls out the BS this is great, mm -hmm. yeah. and says, well, listen, y'all weren't matched at that point. She didn't know whether or not she's going to be married. So that really shouldn't stop her from being her full self to you. So like, what's up with that? Um, he says, she, he, you know, he says, I'm confused. Like what, what does that have to do with her being her full self with you at, in that moment? He says, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I know it was just, I know, it was just the timing of what I said was bad. 
And, you know, I, I really effed up that conversation. I know I shouldn't have judged her. And, you know, she felt that she was her, her character was being questioned and she felt ganged up on. He does say that he is very sorry to Lauren. Lauren says, yeah, I, I feel. But she's like, heard this before. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's, yeah. it's a rerun. She says, I appreciate the apology. He does sound genuine, but it does not take the hurt away, um, you know, that I experienced in that moment. Uh, Onion says, you know, he realized he, he did realize that night that it didn't matter what she was doing before she got matched. And he messed up by doing that. And he uh, again apologized for making her upset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kevin says, uh, so so is it safe to say you gave up on the relationship too easy? Now, th- now this is the this is the real Ooh. moment that Onion be- Onion is Ooh. on his BS. He says, mm-hmm. well, I gave up on the process too easily. Kevin says, but the, the process is the marriage. And Lauren's like, yeah, yeah, he don't think of it that way. He he, he thinks of the same yeah. thing. They different he, to him. He says, yeah, I gave <laughs> I that. gave up too easily on all the tools the experts could have given us. I gave up I gave up on that on the process. Because so basically you get you you are saying you gave up on the marriage too fast. And then he just says, mm, unsure. More waffling, more flip flopping. Literally. I, Why is that so love, hard to say that you gave up so hard? You why did. Do you have to, why does this man have you back into a corner to <laughs> to give any sort of apology for anything, to admit any type of wrongdoing? Uh, Kevin again is holding his feet to the fire. He says, "Yeah, you left the process early, but the process is a marriage, so you left the marriage early." He says, "Yeah, yeah, okay, yes, yes, yes." Like, why? Why does it have to be so hard with you? Why is it like pulling teeth to get you to admit that you you effed up? Uh, mm-hmm. Kevin asks Lauren about if she's sad about you know how it went. Lauren says, uh, no, she's more sad about the partner that she got. She says, there's no right or wrong way to go about marriage, but you do need a willing participant. And he obviously wasn't ready for a marriage. She yep. says she she says she knew there'd be difficulties, but he wasn't up for the challenge. That's a damn. jab. Damn. <laughs> she was just damn. Like, in she all just, facts. Yes. I this this section with Lauren was so hilarious. I was like, oh, get him. Get him again. <laughs> oh, get him again. She hit him left, right, and center, and then she said like every colloquial black statement for, you know, you a dummy. <laughs> was she, she stitching? Was she stitching? Came up later? Was she getting them? <laughs> yes, uh, it was yeah. so good. Well, even with the with the Orion here too. Um, mm-hmm. If you uh, like it, I love it. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you. I that. <laughs> so uh, I think Onion has kind of uh, realized he's been beat because. When Kevin just asked, mm-hmm. so would you say that you were just a little too stubborn? He just says, "Yeah, yeah." He, he cannot. He can't BS anymore. He realizes he's just been, he's been caught. He's like, he could yes, define was, stubborn. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I was. If they had asked him that question the first time, you know, in the first couple of minutes, that's what he would have said. He said, just says yes, too stubborn. <laughs> Kevin says, "So, Lauren, do you even care if you guys have a friendship?" She says, "Absolutely not. They don't <laughs> talk, and that is the way that she wants it. And she wishes him nothing more than <laughs> what he deserves." Yep. Oh, I said, "Oh, oh, he was already dead. She put a cap in him just to make sure." <laughs> Kevin says, "So, what does that mean?" She well, just... Kevin, you know what that means. He, uh, he, right. been, he had to be being messy in this moment because yep. this is the moment, this moment right here when he said, what does that mean? That I realized they were the only two black people on stage this <laughs> whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Outside of the experts. <laughs> oh, he, he's trying to get her to spell it out, but yep, she'll Lauren, know what she means. <laughs> Lauren just shrugs. She's like, I'm going to do an Orion move and just, you know. Do the do the hand thing. Just not say anything. Not say what I really mean. Basically, um, mm-hmm. Kevin says. So uh, I think he asked uh, Onion. This is. Do you think this was initially a good match? Uh, he says, Yeah, yeah, I do. I do think that. Um, and Kevin asks, Do you think it would have? It could have worked if you had stuck with it and you know kept kept going with the relationship. He says, Yeah, I, I think it could have worked. And so Kevin says, So Lauren, what do you? How do you feel about that? Laura says, I'll say this. You can only meet someone as far as they have met themselves. You can't overexert yourself in trying to bring someone to being ready. And they were not evenly yoked in this match. I said, ooh, get him. Jesus. Mm. Right. Onion is asking, is begging for mercy. He says, listen, the horse is dead. Time to stop beating it. Time, time to stop beating me, basically. <laughs> can I please mm-hmm. leave? Kevin. So Kevin gets to, so where are you guys at now? 
Uh, Kevin asked if she's dating. She says, "Oh, well, Kevin, you're all in my business." She says Dude, she's right. in a she's in a happy, healthy, loving place in her life right now. So, right, yeah. you do a little you, you do a little too much now here, Lauren. Um, she yeah. basically refuses to answer. She's funny. with someone. Yeah, she she mm-hmm. really refuses. She's not going to tell her business out in the street. Uh, Onion does say he's been seeing someone for a couple months now, and it's going really well. Can liar. <laughs> Why are you like, liar? Yeah, I've seen so many people don't believe him. I don't believe you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've been. I'm with somebody. I'm. I'm obviously not going to give any details. Like, Ian, you ain't with nobody. You just want to. I'm so happy with uh just, with my girlfriend. With my girlfriend in Canada. Uh, you you can't. Yes, she doesn't exactly. like she doesn't like pictures. Uh, you know, she's very uh. not. Very, right. she's not on social media. Yeah, she's not on social media. I'm not, not on social media. There, yeah, you know, it's really kind of a liar. Kind of a, you know, a, a liar. Thing. <laughs> I love to. I love to introduce <laughs> you, but she's she's camera shy. She's shy. <laughs> yeah, Kevin says. So what? So what have you learned? He says I've learned not to generalize because it can sound like gaslighting. No, sir, you were gaslighting. <laughs> it's not this generalization stuff. You were. I you were just being came off dick. that way. Yeah, he's on you know it, it makes sense to me at the time when I'm saying it, but in reality, I guess it just doesn't make sense. Oops. I just just the just the rationalization these people have for their for their BS is beyond beyond ridiculous at this point. Um Kevin says, Listen, I, I didn't think it was gonna work at first, but then I thought it would work, and then it didn't work. Lauren says, Yeah, <laughs> you, you totally jinxed us. <laughs> Everyone goes backstage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everyone goes backstage. And this is where Onion gets his big boy pants back on when he's not when he's not in front of Lauren. He says, "You know, it's really the BS comments that that get me. That's 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 what gets me." It's Lauren pretty says, eye opening. <laughs> Lauren says, "Listen here, I ain't build a bear like this. The, I'm not in the build a bear business. This is above my pay grade. I'm not here to build mm-hmm. up some man." Uh, Onion says, "You know, I was really hoping for a better outcome." Shut up, Onion. <sighs> Shut up. What it's better bad, outcome man. is it than y'all just? Not talking ever again. You do not need to be friends. I got enough friends. Yeah, Lauren, got right? Yeah, that's so pointless. Friends. Pointless. Yes. Um. So, so then, yeah. yeah. That, I mean, that was it for them. Uh, the ex- yeah. <laughs> the experts come out with all the women. Um. They point out how this is Doctor P. Technically, Doctor P. is third season, but her first full season. Pastor Cal has been yeah. here since season four. And Dr. Pepper has been here all 17 seasons. Was she? Was she in this season? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> hmm. what's, a, what's a common denominator in all these <laughs> failures, uh, Dr. Pepper? I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> and so Kevin asked them their th- thoughts on all the deception. Dr. Pepper just had no idea that they had made a plan. She feels bad. Pastor Cal's like, look, we were just trying to make marriages work. Dr. Pia was very disappointed. She's like, I'm a clinical psychologist. I don't just play one on TV. Mm-hmm. And so then the ladies come on out. And so uh, Dr. Pepper is like, it's been distressing how unhappy everyone is. Like, I, she's like, we have very little information about what's going on. And Becca's like, yeah, I'm sorry we didn't get to know y'all in an authentic way. And Claire said she didn't feel like they were in an environment where she could advocate for herself. That's, it's so, it's so annoying to me how and we talk about there's a lot of talk about accountability in this reunion special and I feel like most of the ladies are just shrugging off all the accountability to the men at this point all how y'all feel about that I mean I don't know like I okay so the, the men came up with this plan Apparently, and I think the plan has been blown uh, been blown out of proportion at this point. Like, I, I, I think the plan is is bigger than they ever intended it to be. Their plan, their plan was just like, we're just gonna make ourselves look good. I don't think there was even any follow up to the plan. I don't think there are any follow up strategy meetings. I, I think it's been blown out of proportion. I don't know. I feel like I like I I agree. I think like Claire and Emily could take some more accountability. For you know their marriages flopping, but honestly, I, I I agree with them. I'm sorry the the men this season were 
Oh, they were trash. Good. They yeah, were, they I, were, yeah, mega was, trash. Was and but, but to say you didn't feel safe, I think is is yeah. a pro, is a problematic phrase for me that you didn't I feel agree. safe. I agree. I, I, that that part of it is what trips me up. Um, because it to me also suggests other things. They don't say those things are happening, but it just, that that mm-hmm. verbiage that verbiage is troubling for me. I mean, we even yeah. heard it from Emily last uh, reunion uh, the in the first part, saying like she would be punished by Brennan. Mm-hmm. Like it's certain verbs that people are using that they're just trying to like pile on okay. to this narrative of like the men were bad, the women uh, were the recipient of the bad men yeah. that we had on this season and so yeah. they continue to try to double down double I would down say, it, yes. yeah like i feel like the only one that's kind of like treading lightly i mean with the mm-hmm. exception of like lauren because she's like over orion but yeah, i feel like yeah. becca, becca. Mm-hmm. yeah she's yeah. kind of like i'm sad i'm really disappointed this didn't work i'm trying to address these things with austin he's not receiving it so like what can i do whereas it's- claire and emily are like we need to make them look as bad as possible. as possible. Exactly. It's like doth protest too much. It's like we get it. They treated you badly, but the the way that you are dragging it on and on and and really trying to like really get across how bad they were, it's just like it's just at this point it's crossing the line where it's not a good look onto you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like especially since I think they uh, again they accomplished their goals. I don't. I think Brennan. I really haven't liked Brennan all season. Cameron did sneak up on me. I didn't like him <laughs> as much as you guys did, like or Jason did throughout Jason. the season. Oh no, it was it was Asia <laughs> too. It was Asia no, too. Jason but, loved Cameron. I oh my gosh. <laughs> I, but, I'm gonna get five my receipts. I'm gonna get five my mean, receipts. Y'all, y'all, y'all do have be having a Clint every season that I don't agree with, but like <laughs> and, and Cameron was your Clint. But like like how I've seen, like I totally flipped my view on him, and I believe, I believe, I'm sorry, I believe it. I believe a lot of the stuff that they said about him now. So, but it's just too much. I think it's just too much because you just keep going over and over and over it, and it's just like we heard you. We we hit double day hot tub sleeping with a friend. We've heard it. We've heard, <laughs> we've heard it. Yeah. It gets to a point where we've heard it so much that now mm-hmm. it's like we're desensitized to it. We don't care. Yes, they messed up. Okay, what do you want us to do about it? We can't give you your eight weeks back. Like, you can't stay mad. And I think that's why we all love Lauren because Lauren's just like, good riddance. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, she, you but, know, but so. But yeah. I think it's these moments where they're saying like, "We there's nothing we could have done. We just, we couldn't speak up because these men were making us not able to yeah. speak up. I'm like, okay. like, And even the experts will give them their, like, take them to task, which I appreciated mm-hmm. for for not, for feeling like they couldn't speak up or wouldn't speak up. I, I just yeah. don't know which one it is at this Pia point. Did. Pia yeah. did. Pia said, Pia was like, you know, Pia, Pia felt like she was like, well, you could have talked to us. Mm-hmm. Pepper, who was not here, defended the felt like I felt like she was defending the men. I'm like, mm-hmm. that's why I feel like she went into the next segment with that energy that she had. But yes. Dr. Mm-hmm. Pia was like, what was going on? Becca was like, the men, they wanted to look good on camera. And so they had this heightened uh they them wanting look camera them wanting look to look good on camera gave us this heightened anxiety. And so Dr. P was like, what could we have done differently in this situation? And she was like, well, in hindsight, expecting us to know that uh, that would be the right move to talk to y'all would have been a lot. And I was like, what? Oh, did you see the look <laughs> that, that Cal and Pepper gave each other? Like, yes. what, you hear this BS? Like, let's listen to this. I said, what do you mean? That's what the experts are for, to talk to. What do you mean that? Well, <laughs> Again, Lauren Lauren had their numbers. Lauren and Orion had the, the mm-hmm. experts numbers. So yes. I don't understand why Claire and Emily and Becca and that, couldn't have done the mm-hmm. same. I, I, I like honestly it's too much to, to have us thinking we could actually talk to the people that we're supposed to be able to talk to. It's too much exactly. on us. Exactly. It's too much. Like it's too much. Yeah. Emily yeah, couldn't yeah. tell Brennan about whatever it was that she found. I think it was just an echo chamber. I think both yes. sides, I think this is the one season, like this is one of the seasons where both sides were just in 
the the craziest echo chamber that they just kept feeding off of each other yeah. that this is probably the worst part of the experiment when we see this happen and and them being so influenced by the other couples and the other yes. couples um yeah i mean ever since ever Ever since we've gotten to this phase where the couples are all around each other, people have been saying for for seasons upon seasons they shouldn't be doing this They're around each other too much. This is the argument for them. This is their season to say, yeah, this "See, is yeah. this is why they shouldn't do it this way because it causes this." When in reality, this is the really the first and only season that's gotten this bad, like yeah. so far. So yeah. yeah, like one can only hope that Chicago was not watching this, <laughs> and they've you know they don't have this thought of oh we could deceive production um so hopefully, hopefully production has learned any type of lessons from this uh going into their future season but i feel like we say that every season like hopefully production has <laughs> learned their lesson and is going to change things and, well you know. look we argue multiple seasons more experts more experts this season had the most experts and they and weren't utilized. To be this, yeah, they weren't even utilized. It happened to be the one where they wanted to be dishonest with them. And I'm like, we literally which came, which came first, the chicken or the egg? <laughs> right. did, 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 did we have more experts because everyone was so dysfunctional? Or was the plan always to have more experts before they that's figured true. out this season was going to be uh, a trash? Uh, right. Season. I mean, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. So mm. um, Doc, uh, Pastor Cow asked, who was the ringleader? And they say, Cameron. And so Dr. Pepper's like, y'all had the equipment to tell us how you feel. Um, and, because we don't look at y'all like wilted flowers. We look at y'all as like strong women. And so uh, Kevin turns to Chloe because she has not been a part of this conversation. Oh He's like, What's the process? What was the process like for you? And she says, you know, Michael's not grouped with any kind of scheme. Um, she, they were just trying to navigate a marriage and she couldn't imagine having the experience that the rest of the women had. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Pitt. Dr. Pepper says typically when she feels heat, she just wants to know the source. <laughs> like, okay, Pepper, cool. when you feel heat, you just get up and go to your other house. Okay. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. what you do. Uh, Pastor Cow uh. says they, they always have the best intentions when matching. Uh, Emily's like, you don't have to tell us that. We know. And uh, <laughs> have you not heard and seen yourself in this in this thing? Because I mean, she goes, Yeah, this is we've really taken this opportunity to grow and become better and stronger. I said, You have? Since when? Like, she said they put in the work. They watch the episodes. They pause to talk about it. I feel like they're probably the wrong, talking about, the oh, lessons. they didn't show this part. Yeah. You're taking the wrong lessons, I think, out of your pause sessions. Yeah. Your pause sessions. <laughs> to vent, yeah. So Dr. P says the healthy and the unhealthy comp compartmentalization, um, she's wondering if that's adding fuel, kind of what you said, what, what you said, Mari, uh -huh. to their healing journey. Like, it feels like the, I feel like the appropriate course correct would be to separate the couples, stagger those wedding dates. Don't have these, the group, the women meet up, the men meet up, see how it works as an isolated experiment as it did back in the day where they weren't all on top of each other every I mean, week. I would, I, I did would it with Michael and Chloe this season. Yeah. Yeah. I would be mm -hmm. in favor of having not, not a, state themed you know uh mass like we're in chicago we're in texas we're in, have couples in different states so that they like 90 they, day yeah oh. yeah cut, cut out the ability to gather together because even if Dr. they don't Pepper put them together said, i ain't doing all that flying because yeah, yeah, <laughs> like it, even if y'all don't put them together they're gonna get together once they figure out who each other is like mm -hmm. even if you don't you know introduce them they'll be like i'm gonna figure out who is you know who else Who's is getting who? masked? I think if you separate them by states, I don't. I think you have less. You have less of that. Yeah. So like that, that would be that's a, a that's an interesting. Idea. Yeah, that's an interesting thought. And maybe you'll actually get people who want to be on the show because then you you don't go to a city like Denver and find that there's <laughs> absolutely no men. Yes. yes right. Totally. But you've already committed to the doing it everything get, in the city of Denver. You get the best of the best of whatever state that these people are in. Like <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. yeah. You get the one best man and the one best woman. Like, all right, we're gonna. This is our couple for uh, Texas, and you go to New York. This is our couple for New York, and we just follow mm -hmm. them in their journey like that. I think that would be interesting. That would be so interesting. Listen we to these people. Lifetime. 
They're we smart. can also cut it. We can also cut it to an hour since we're getting rid of all these men and women segments together. So we can, mm-hmm. we can cut the episodes down to an hour if we, cut if, the we, flow. if we can. Yeah. That was it for the experts with the ladies. Yeah. So we get to the experts and the men now. Uh, so we get Austin and Cam have both come back just in time for this segment. And for some reason, Austin has shaved. It doesn't even get that big of a reaction from anybody. I'm like, oh. Yeah, big. I was mainly looking for like Becca to say something. She yeah, like a five too. o'clock shadow already. I was like, geez, <laughs> right. Right. this man, this man is a Sasquatch. He grows hair at, a, at an alarming rate. I don't know what is up mm-hmm. with this guy because <laughs> he, he's got a five o'clock shadow already. Got stubble. I said, hey. <laughs> uh, so I mean, Kevin does that. So Austin, what's what's going on? What's what's the, what's with the no beard? He's you know, I just needed a refresh, and you know, I just woke up and you know the beard had to go. I was like, okay, this is, I think we I, I legit. I think we broke Austin. I think he's just like out of <laughs> out of his head at this point because he says almost nothing for the rest of the show. Yeah, literally no thoughts, just vibes. Like Austin mm-hmm. took some hallucinogens or something. Like when he when he was <laughs> laying down, he like he he woke up was like I gotta cut my beard. My beard is, mm-hmm. is spaghetti. I gotta get rid of it. Like he's some like, edibles he was, or something. And, yeah, and he's just trying to get through the rest of the show because he's like he's seeing like talking bread as Kevin. He's like I just see Kevin mm-hmm. is talking bread right now. I'm just gonna be quiet because I'm just like, I'm, tri- <laughs> I'm tripping. I'm tripping balls right now, man. I'm tripping. Mm-hmm. I just it was so weird. <laughs> um. So yeah, we, Kevin then talks about you know so. Uh, experts, let's talk about let's talk more about the the fraud that these men have perpetrated on this on this uh, on this process. I said, and this really got me thinking. I said, can the show sue the cast for fraud? Mm. I mean, they have admitted mm. to defrauding the mm-hmm. process in the show. I said, they did. They that's it. interesting. Would maybe that have a I... downstream effect though, and people wanting to be on? <laughs> Maybe. And maybe that's also why the season was delayed. They were, they were uh, searching out their legal options. <laughs> right. <laughs> if, we, if we sue them, we can't show the season. So let's, let's check and see if we can actually do this. Mm. Uh, but yeah, so Kevin asked them, you know, what do y'all want to say to the men? Pepper says, you know, she was really shocked. She thought that all the men had good intentions and to find out there was a plan really cuts the experts out of the process. Uh, she asked Cam, so Cam, uh, I'm going to come to you because you seem to be the, the mastermind of all this. How did you come up with this? How did, did you, you notice like when they entered and hugged, <clears throat> Dr. Prep was like, we need to talk. Yeah. And before they even started, it's like, I just saying Cam's not here. Like right. I need to really speak to him. And it's like, oh, no, Cam's here. Like, oh, she's good. mad at Cam. Yeah. But I feel, I feel like her, I, I feel like she's going to, she's going to give him a talking to you off camera, which is a problem. Uh-huh. Um so yeah, she says. So how did you come up with this? How did you convince the whole group to do this? He's like, ah, first of all, like this is there's a lot of provable lies here. I didn't have no. To, I didn't. First, he said, when you say they, who are you referring to? You, uh-huh. you know who they're referring to. What are you talking? I was come like, this is when I said, oh, we're about to get a load of stuff from Cam because yep. he's trying to act like he has no idea. Who who is they? Mm. <laughs> Kara said, listen, I didn't have to, I didn't convince anyone to do anything. He says, I did not tell these men what to do in their marriages. And the other guys just, just kind of nod and agree with him. He, he didn't tell us what to do. Uh, Cameron says, my part of it was to, you know, make, make it look good for you guys to deceive the experts. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Cam- Cameron says, you know, they, they're accusing us of all this collusion and all the stuff that we're coming up with. But look at them. They're ma- They're dressing in matching outfits. <laughs> Who's the one scheming and planning now? <laughs> And the music else. behind that, did y'all hear the music? No. It was like like doofus music. It was like <laughs> like it was weird, like the dodo edit, you know, like type <laughs> music the whole time he was rambling like that. And in this moment, I said, This is yes. ridiculous. This is so dumb. Yes. And I'm glad Lauren will give it to him later about, yes. this, yes. about what he says here. Uh and so Cam really comes up with the with the BS now. He says he says, I'm just so ashamed of myself. And this man's lip begins to quiver, literally. And he gets all teary. I just, I feel like I've learned nothing in my life. He says, he's like, you know, I, I blacked out. I, I'm not sure if I apologize to you yet, Dr. Pepper. Did, did I apologize? Dr. Pepper says, yes, yes, you did. Says, I was trying to apologize. I'm not sure what I said. Says, yes, I'm, I, I'm just you, like, so sorry. Pause before this happened. That was scary. <laughs> this man's and, the, and, and this is when the music, and this is when the music went back 
to like mm-hmm. mm, like like soft like sad tones. I was like, what is happening right now? He says, "I'm." He says, I, "I'm so sorry, Doctor Pepper." He says, "And I'm not. I'm honestly don't remember if I lied to you, Pastor Cal, and you, Doctor P. But if I did, I, I'm. I'm so sorry." He's like, "Cam, give it a uh, break. Oh you are you just trying to get an Oscar because so, something. <laughs> so, what's something's got to give? Because the way that Doctor Pepper ate these tears up." Oh she boy, said, she oh she he's so sorry. Hook, line, and sinker for this. Oh, uh, Pastor Cal says, "Listen, the thing is, we're just getting two different stories from the men and the women, and it's just super confusing for us." Mm-hmm. Pepper says, "Well, listen, I'm sorry for all the suffering that you all have have had here. Um, there are so many lessons, and we really want the best for you guys." And we hope this really helps you get to a new floor and a new door, and use this to make you even stronger. Dr. Pia says, yes, yes, use this to make you stronger. Ask yourselves uh, why you feel the need to uh, think that you need to protect other people uh, and encourages all of them to get individual support. She's afraid to say therapy in front of Brennan because she knows that it will set him <laughs> off. She, <laughs> she knows a trigger word for him. Yeah, um, like, like just like a sit down and sit down <laughs> coffee chat. Yeah. You know, just talk to someone on a couch maybe for an hour at a time. You know, maybe get them through your insurance. I don't know. Just, just thinking. Just thinking off a dome. Um, uh, Pastor Gus, you know, this is a lot of the process. And, you know, we, it's going to be a long, a long road to healing for all of you. Michael, Michael speaks up and he says, you know, his hope, his hope is that this is a really healing moment for all the, for all, for all of them. And this has really meant growth for him and his one, one-on-one moment with Chloe really illuminated a lot for him. And that's really the silver lining here for all of us. <sighs> uh, so, okay, Michael, all right. Uh, Brennan, uh, Brennan takes this moment to apologize to Dr. Pia. He says, "Listen, I want to apologize to you, Dr. Pia. You saw, you saw two sides of Brennan." I said, "Okay, all right, third person, come through." He says, "You saw the fun-loving Brennan in the beginning, and then you saw backed in the corner, protective and controlling Brennan near the end. And I didn't really give you a fair chance to help us." Pia says, I, you know, I appreciate the apology. He says, it's, it's actually a big moment for you to take ownership of your controlling behavior. I, honestly, I gave it. I, I was like, okay, Brennan, you, you're saying, you're at least saying the right things, whether he believes them or not. You to? know, I, mm-hmm. so yes, I do think that a lot of the stuff that he was saying to Emily wasn't genuine. I mean, I, I feel like, yes, he was being honest, but when he was saying like, oh, you know, I care about your feelings and stuff. I didn't, yes. I, I didn't feel that. But this apology to Dr. Pepper, I did feel like that was genuine because Brennan does not strike me as the person who's going to force an apology that he doesn't mean, especially with how he was acting with Dr. Pia. Like, I don't think he would. I feel like he is too prideful to give an apology that he, if he didn't mean it. doesn't mean. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I just I, feel I, like I he wouldn't know. have said it at all. The can- I don't know. I think the camera is play a, a, a bigger role in it now i do think that his apology to dr pia was a little bit more genuine than anything he said to emily in this in these yeah. um reunions but no i think i think he came here with like cleanup duty like he wanted to yeah. clean up his image and and emily knew it and they both just pressed each other's buttons so they got the worst out of each other mm-hmm. but I, I think a lot of a lot of the stuff Brennan says feels so scripted, but I I like I at least believe this more than other stuff that he said on the reunion. Yeah, yeah. There's de- definitely different levels of how I felt about Brennan and his apologies and what he was saying throughout this whole thing. Yeah. But I do think in I do think in this battle in the war between Brennan and Emily, I think Brennan won this round. <laughs> I really sure do. Have. Because he came out, he, he, as Mari said, he knew what buttons to push mm-hmm. and it, it didn't take a big push, honestly, um, mm-hmm. to send, to send Emily over the edge. Cause this mm-hmm. Emily comes out looking worse in this than Brennan does. I think Brennan actually helped his reputation and his image mm-hmm. in this. I think that's, I, as Mari said, that was his aim. And I think he succeeded in a way because Emily is the one that looks, that comes out looking way worse with her pettiness, her bitterness, and just all around immaturity in here. Yeah, I I mean, for me, my my opinion on Brennan has always been low, so this didn't raise it <laughs> <laughs> at all. So, mm. but um, 
I definitely think that the guys wanted to get out of this expert segment as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. So they all just apologized. It was <laughs> so then, short. It was yeah. very short. And um, you can definitely tell that the women were backstage watching it because yes. Definitely. Yeah. Because yeah. they were you want to take this part? <laughs> yeah, because it felt like the it felt like it was out of nowhere. But then it was like, oh no, they were watching this yes. mm -hmm. what the guys are saying. And so it's like just imagining Claire watch Cameron break down. Mm -hmm. Cause they came back oh, in sorry. It, guns are blazing. I was like, oh god. Yeah, like, like, <laughs> and I mean they were they were getting hyped backstage, right? Like, like literally, last... yeah. Claire said, "Let's keep fighting." Becca yeah. said she has nothing else to give, so she's a little defeated. Poor Brennan Becca. says, "All right, guys, round two. <laughs> this is last <laughs> skirmish. This is like before she's the war is over. Yeah. Give it all you got, man. <laughs> Don't let them bring it down." Yeah, and Brennan says. Emily hated Claire. My biggest regret is getting her to like Claire. <laughs> yeah, even Kansas, they all hate each other during filming. I don't understand this. Like, oh, oh and so um, they get, they walk in. We're still pre-title card, right? So it technically mm -hmm. hasn't the scene hasn't started. And Emily's like, "Don't look at me like that." <laughs> to to no, the camera. The, the way they came in was just ultra aggressive. It's like you yeah. are. You are proving their point. You are making their argument for them at this point. It was oh. tough. And then Emma goes, you should have your heads down after that. And then uh, Claire, Claire looked at Cam and called him a liar. Becca's crying. Becca was crying. This, was this, like, is, this is this is all before. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> I'm just like, what just happened? <laughs> oh, my goodness. So they're all back together. We get a flashback um, to what was the flashback of? I guess it was. Um, was this they the start Chloe talking about segment? camp? No. What are they talking about here? Well, they're talking about Cameron and Brennan and their double date. Oh, oh, mm -hmm. yeah. so oh! The flashback to Emily and Claire talking yeah, about. Oh, to date. Emily yeah. and Claire talking. Okay, yeah, when, yeah, when she, yeah. When yes, when Claire broke it to Emily, I thought it was gonna be something different, and it was the same scene. Yes. <laughs> it's like, like they're like, let's take a look. I was like, ooh. So Cameron says him and Brennan went to Union Station. Then we get so many cut. Like they kept interrupting that, and we couldn't. They didn't move on from the story until after all of what we were about to talk about. So. Emily and Claire are just bawling. And they're like, continue to lie about it. Just continue to lie about it. And Claire is like, Brennan wanted to F my best friend. And and he, and he was Fing other people. He's like, wait, so which is it? Which is it? How, was I doing both? And so um He caught her. He caught her on that though. He 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 definitely caught her on like, so which which one is it? Like, what what's up? Yeah, it's just like I feel like they had enough to stick to the facts. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like they could have accomplished what they want to accomplish by sticking to what the guys actually did or lack thereof, right? Yeah. But or the fact that... Well, we have provable evidence for Yes. It. And mm -hmm. the fact that they kept trying to add on was the downfall. So yeah. Lauren speaks up. She's like, and Cameron, I or Brennan, or whichever one, I take offense to the comment about the pink dresses. Like, we did this to stand up for ourselves. It wasn't some you know, scheme or anything. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, and Cameron, you look be be bewildered. That is so fly with me. Uh, she said, cut it. Uh, she's like, cut that, cut that ish and, con and continue on with whatever this is. And so then Cameron's like, what? what? And then she's like, keep, po keep poking the bear. I'll bite back. You don't scare me. Try me if you want. I'm not the one or the two. Now continue. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And Cameron's like, well, oh, it's, it's it's funny that you could you could dish it and and not take it and and she's like, I never said anything to you. Like what? Oh, I was so this happy. Lauren his, she, was like, don't even fire. try me. What? This, she lit his ass. She lit his ass on fire. Yes. She she. Oh. This and, is and he looked, he, Cam was like, see, this is why I asked why you're a European girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and like. Honestly, I was I was like they came back into the segment because they felt like the experts 
the experts let them off the hook in their mm-hmm. mind. I, that's why I think they're like they're like there's no accountability, and they're they're trying to like the experts are not going to ask the men about stuff like rumors about this or that. The the experts said it. The only thing that they can really, I'm, I'm pretty sure they can only feasibly talk about is what's caught on camera. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like so, it's like they can't talk about all of this stuff that he said, she said, y'all said um, your friend saying that he wants to do this in, the, in, a, in a hot tub <laughs> that we don't know about. Like the experts aren't bringing that up, and yeah, I do feel like the experts went a little soft on the men. Um, I mean, but, what you wanted to say to them, like. Exactly, we're dis- like we're disappointed in you. Like that's we're what else you want. What else? Exactly. Yeah. And so the women coming back in, and then again for this final segment, just looking like Claire and Emily really did just not do themselves any service here, and poor Becca just a, a, a crying heap. And then now Lauren got to mm-hmm. step up and threaten everybody. Right. Which is hilarious. <laughs> like, don't get started with me, Cam. <laughs> I'm not like, the one is, or the two. I was so glad. I was like, I'm glad this is the last segment because I just could not. Like, my head was like, my head I was like, is like it? it? I paused. I was trying to see how much time was left. Mm-hmm. So well, now they're like, gonna try when, to squeeze in something else. And Claire, like, and then you're talking with the segment, you're, you, the part you're talking about, Asia, where she's like, you, you want to f this person? You want to f that? She was just was making no sense. She was literally like speaking gibberish and then she goes like isn't that right cam is that true cam cam goes to get ready to speak and she's like well i don't expect you to tell the truth anyway he's like <laughs> right. do you speak i didn't even talk uh, yeah See, so they're I, going I just lost it <laughs> yes so they're going at them accusing like cam and brennan of lying about this situation and so brennan was like cameron and claire were separating claire was like we were still working on our marriage <laughs> And then Emily is just, she can't, she cannot anymore. She storms out. And then Brennan was like, everything we say can't be a lie. And I'm like, Brennan, that same applies. It You're saying every be. single thing they're saying is a lie too. But but like, it literally can be though. It, it could be <laughs> if, if it is <laughs> like, I don't know why he said that. Like it, everything could be a lie if you are actually lying. Technically. Yeah, it could. Yeah, uh, but- so <laughs> This is a classic case of it's somewhere in the middle. Like yeah. with every one of these situations, it's all somewhere in the middle. No yeah. one's telling the exact truth because they all want to say the truth that makes them look it look the Good. best. That's that's what this is. This is this is that for almost every situation that we're in. And it's crazy. Yeah. So Emily is backstage crying. Um, she's like, he can't even acknowledge me sobbing on the clip, which I'm like, Why would y'all he? are divorced, y'all are right. exes. Why would your, yeah? Why would he? Your ex was a contentious relationship. This isn't Michael and Chloe. Like they're not gonna be like. I'm so sad that you're sad. He don't care about you. He's happy that you're sad. Like that's where it's at right now. I think she's still looking for that. She's still looking for him, like she was the whole relationship, looking for him to care. This ain't the moment. It's not gonna happen now. If it didn't happen during the eight weeks, it's not happening now. So Lauren says, mm-hmm. like, y'all, let them get 10 words out. So Cameron, finally, back to the story. Okay, so we went to Union Station. We saw two girls at the at the bar. My marriage was plainly over. Then Brennan, Brennan goes, my marriage was plainly over. It's like, no, it wasn't, Brennan. And so Cam just joked to Brennan and said, in a couple of months, we can approach them. And he said, that's all it was. There was no action, no nothing. And Brennan was like, Claire, if you were really concerned about your friend, you would have just come to me about it. And uh... <laughs> uh, listen, though, Claire just Claire was just like, whatever, which makes me think that was the the truth. Which makes me think that was exactly what happened. Yeah, and Cam came and and joked about it with her, and then she just took it and ran with it. Yeah, because Cameron was like, well, you would you should have just came to me about it. I feel like we saw a lot of Cam's humor not land with her yes. or even the audience, right? He has a very specific sense of humor. And I feel like he probably joked with her about this. They're already done. Like they, they, un- they have an understanding that this isn't going to work out. He joked about it. She took it and, and, and ran with not. Yeah. Took it and ran with it. And mm-hmm. then it was, it just turned into this whole thing. My question is how did it get from the bar to a situation where Cam is joking about it with Claire. 
Because that's how Claire, that's that's how it came to be in Claire's mind that Cam told her that he was joking with Brennan about this. Right. That's why I feel like Cameron strikes me as somebody that like you don't why would you be joking with your just ex about this? But I feel like he would do right. it. Yeah, that, it's that's just too weird. much. It's, I don't yes. I don't at this point I don't care. Like I don't care. I don't Same. care about your cut your friend Lily. I don't care about the hot tub. I don't care about the double date. <laughs> Claire was like, I'll call my friend right now. She'll tell the truth. Why? Do it. Why? Do point? it. Yeah, do it. Why can't we do that? Here? Why can't we do that right now? Like, I, I there was a severe lack of actual receipts in this. If we had some actual <laughs> what receipts about Cameron's in, receipt? In this process, it would have made me feel a lot better. But there was no actual receipts, which is a, a big minus for this reading. Oh, yeah. All he said, so, she said. Emily comes back. She's like, she's disgusted with everything from today. And Kevin was like, look, you, you don't, he's like, they're going to hate me for saying this, but you don't have to be here. You really like, you really don't have to be here. If you, if you don't want to be, she's like, I'm here. And if I want to be here, I'll be here. I was <laughs> like, he was trying to help you. He was trying to say, you don't have to be a part of this. All she was just about to be <laughs> like why i'm sorry why are we at the point where you're talking over your shoulder oh. if i wanted to be here i'd be here <laughs> kevin, emily uh, he's not she, your enemy kevin, she's lucky kevin didn't bring up now look here little girl <laughs> this, right. this, is what we're, this is what we're not gonna do what we're okay? not gonna do oh so <sighs> then we get a fun moment of Michael and Chloe thrifting. <laughs> so that was <laughs> great. <laughs> uh, then Kevin asked what it's like being recognized. Well, hold on, um, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to bring up the amount of money spent on this clothes on these clothes because I was confused. Because right. after the after the fashion show, whatever Chloe and Michael were doing, she asked mm-hmm. him about a, a budget. He says four thousand dollars. I wasn't sure if this was four thousand dollars a month, right. four thousand dollars a year, four thousand dollars for your wardrobe, mm-hmm. Asia, or like just four thousand. This I seems to be know. your wheelhouse. <laughs> what do what do the rich and famous spend per month on discretionary? <laughs> yeah. What I so thought. It... He said, in that's that discretionary moment, funds. I I thought she was asking. How much would he like? What's the most he would spend if he went thrifting? What? Like, yeah. if he were to be shopping right then and there, like, would he spend that much? But why would you spend four thousand dollars thrifting? Where are I don't you? Know. At? <laughs> you buying the whole store? Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I I I don't know what thrifting is like. $2. Oh, and, yeah, but. But then nope. we come that's back. why. That's why. That's why. What? Asia said, "I don't know what thrifting is like." Oh, obviously. Yeah, you wouldn't. <laughs> no. no, we. Well, didn't. Asia. Well, Asia, listen. It's these stores that the poor's go to um, when when other people probably like yourself, the, the rich and famous, when they get tired of their clothes, they donate them to these places. And then yep. us poors go there uh-huh. to get secondhand clothing and other items. I know that yes. you probably throw away <laughs> clothes when you're done with them, but some donate uh-huh. them and some other poors need them. So we go to these stores yeah. to hopefully get some cheaper uh, apparel items to wear oh. because yeah, we can't cheaper luxury for, items if we can. Um, you know, red bottoms uh-huh. and uh, uh-huh. other. I know things. what thrifting is. I just don't know what the prices are like. How sway? Like I don't. <laughs> the I the prices are low. That's why four thousand dollars yeah. thrifting don't make no sense, Asia. <laughs> okay. Asia was start. Asia was start itching as she walked to a thrift store. She's like, "Ooh, it feels like poor in here." <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, oh. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to Buffalo Exchange this weekend just for y'all. Oh, listen to this. Listen to this. She said, I know the name of a thrift store. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I, that's a fancy one. If it's yeah, not that's, good Buffalo Exchange. <laughs> <laughs> that's 
Not <laughs> Salvation <laughs> Army, not Goodwill, <laughs> Buffalo Exchange. Not Spindrift. Oh my god. The bougie <laughs> lover is the store. Oh my god. Yeah, I don't I couldn't follow this budget conversation. Yeah, I bet. I bet. But then we come <laughs> out of that. And it's like four thousand dollars. That sounds low for you, Mike. I'm like, what time frame? Someone say it. A four thousand. They refuse to say for the what month, this actually four thousand dollars meant. Like, what the is this? Quarter. What does this mean? Yeah, that was weird. Um, so Kevin asks. Kevin asks. Lauren was like being recognized. She says sometimes she forgets she was on a show, so that's kind of weird. But she's glad that she's like generally nice to people, so it works out. Um, and then Orion got recognized by a flight attendant on the way there. He got a free whiskey. Um, Kevin said people have been finding them online very quick. And Chloe did point out, which we talked about at the beginning mm. of the season, that everyone thought she was the runaway bride. I said, yes, they I definitely that was so did. Interesting that she actually yes. brought that up. And that was like a real world thing we were thinking in the moment. Yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. That's so, I feel like connective tissue. Cause that's yeah. definitely what we were all, what we all sure the internet was talking about. Like, yeah, yeah, that was the debate online. Like, no, I think that's the girl. That's the second girl. I don't think that's the runaway bride girl. Cause not showing who the runaway bride girl is. He just wouldn't be out here on the internet. Just let her be all free and wild. That's definitely the second <laughs> right. person, right? That was a whole thing back in, it was. back in September or October or whatever. A few years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Austin said he had an article written on him about liking one night stands. And he said the thing was he didn't like one night stands. I remember that too. That was a thing that everyone was talking about in the moment. We're like, mm. no, no, no. He said he didn't like one night stands in the matchmaking clip or whatever. I was like, oh, mm. I feel like, I feel like this is a, a related to me. I, I relate to this content. I remember <laughs> this stuff. I mm. love this section. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Emily said her DMs blew up after Brennan said he wasn't attracted to her. Brennan seems to not believe it. <laughs> it's like I'm over both of them. Uh so Cle so Kevin asked, this is our last round robin. What did everybody take away from this experience? Claire said authentic authenticity is key. Chloe said something. <laughs> I didn't know. But Cam said the older he gets, the more he learns about accountability. Emily said her strength and her weakness is just always seen the best in people. Becca is crying and she said she learned a lot. She learned not to chase something that does not chase her. Preach. There you go. Michael said being more mindful to the innocuous things, which is like the fifth time he's used that word. <laughs> this, <laughs> this, this reunion. Austin said learn more about other people's love languages. Orion said uh, he learned he needs to be more intentional with what he says. And Lauren is overwhelmingly happy with her life night right now. And then Kev's like, we've seen 69 couples get married on mar Married at First Sight. The blah, 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 blah. Said, What'd you say? <laughs> How many? Read that. Mm. It's Jason, so that, that line is blurring between Dr. Cal and you. So. I told him that last time. It really is. Blah, blah, I, told blah, him, blah, I told him it's like the yeah. nutty professor. <laughs> there you go. Dr. Cal just comes out. Um, and then uh, we get a preview of Married at First Sight Chicago, which is their second time which, in Chicago, which is which Dr. Is really Pia City. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it wasn't really a preview, though. It was like, it wasn't. again, they could. They could have just put any old, legs. yeah, mm -hmm. they, uh, backs and all that. They could have put any old <laughs> audio footage in there. Oh, is she running away? Now you think they would have? They would have known better than to tease a runaway bride after we had a legit runaway, runaway bride, bride this season. That is happening again. <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, Doctor Pia, we're gonna see even more of her because if this is her city, she gonna be there all the time. But Can't does she wait. still live there though? She was acting like she. Did. I think she is there. This is where she's from. Like I, I don't know. I, I don't think Omi will see any more or less of her. Like well, we saw a lot of her this down, season. I, I think was just Dr. down the street. Like that. Yeah, I was just down the street. I thought I'd just pop in. Like that's not what's gonna be happening. Because that's what I thought we were gonna see a lot more of Doctor yeah. Viviana in the Houston season. Because this is where she lives. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, but I didn't feel like it was an overwhelming amount. I feel like they kept it balanced still. Um, so yeah, we get a preview for where are they now. Orion has cut his hair. Did y'all peep that? That's what you, that's that's what you got out of that. Yeah, that's that's it. I don't remember. Yes, I, I didn't. Yeah, it was shorter. 
So I'm not sure. Mm. So I was like, okay, maybe this is maybe maybe he was inspired by Austin, and this is the week after, or this is some time after. Uh, Chloe and Lauren are no longer friends because Lauren followed Michael on social media. Um, so yeah, it there's seems like we'll find out more. more. There's got to be more yeah. in that story though. Like just because you followed, yes. I, and like I don't, I don't see, be. I don't see Chloe getting irate about really much of anything. So uh, I'm interested to hear well, more. Of that story. So Chloe saying from when she said, "Oh, from a burner account." Somebody mm. sent me something. The worst, some nasty thing I've, things. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the implication That's is that probably one Emily. Other, yeah, one of the other ladies <laughs> with a burner account said something about but, Chloe. But, but I bet you it's not right. It's like well, who, how are they going to find out? Like, editing. No one's going to admit to that. So there's, like, there's Emily's no... like, did you get my DMs? <laughs> <laughs> it was you. <laughs> I wonder if it's just like she's recapping like when people thought she was a runaway bride and she's like, I got Oh, it could be. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I don't know. know. We'll see. Um, But that will be our last episode of the season. Yes, we will be thankful. And we thank y'all for sticking with us for so long this season. Um, So, yes, that's it for reunion part two. Hostage. (laughs) Yeah, for real. (laughs) I wanted to say I, I wanted to leave, but I couldn't. They wouldn't let me. Right. I, wanted I wanted out so my, many times. I wanted to stand in my power and stand up to them and say, I, I don't want to do this anymore, but Asia wouldn't let me. <laughs> uh Mari, thank you so much for joining us. You book you bookended it like the yes. like, very yes. beginning. Bert, yeah, in the very yeah. end here. Thank you guys for having me. I have not I feel like I haven't laughed that hard in like forever. No offense to my other podcast, but like the, the next is... RHAP event, we're all at together. We need to take Asia to a thrift store and show her <laughs> show her what the other side of life yeah, is like. Yeah. Next week on um, our yeah. on our last podcast, I'm gonna be wearing something I got from a thrift store. Okay, <laughs> I, I want to see it. I feel the I feel the pour all over me. <laughs> what you said, wash, wash it? it? I had to wash it five times to get the pour out. Oh, that's horrible. Oh but gosh. yes, thank you. I've been, of course, you know, I listen to you guys every week. I cannot wait for the episodes to drop. I'll be in the Facebook group lurking. Mm-hmm. You guys have a great community over there. I'm I'm super jealous of how how big and amazing and famous you guys are. Uh, <laughs> yeah, be, be like I'm actually, you know what? Be like Mari and be hating on me in the YouTube comments. You think I don't see it, Mari, but I do. <laughs> I, do. I, I keep the YouTube comments. You be hating on me all the time. <laughs> Every time, I love it. I gotta leave a YouTube comment. Oh, hilarious. <laughs> So, oh. yeah. <laughs> well where can people keep up with you if they want to hear yeah, you definitely follow me on twitter at mari talks too much that's too like the number two uh because i will be like going on maternity leave for the podcast for at least like the month of may but yeah, i can always tweet <laughs> i can tweet and, and, and hold the baby so um <laughs> you only need one hand Exactly. You mean so like, like, hold on, I gotta get out this BB can 12 take. Hold on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if you like that. <laughs> so um yeah, so definitely uh go follow me there. Um I I am still doing crime scene for the next few weeks. Me and Sarah Carradine uh bring true crime Tuesdays to RHAP. We uh are dropping our, our 101 episode. Nice. Next week, we have the amazing guest, Rebecca Lavoie, and we talked about what Jennifer did, the documentary on Netflix that's number one trending right now. And uh, I had a recommendation that uh, uh, my good friend Jason here uh, recommended to me, and I checked out an episode, and I then recommended it on Crime Scene. So if you want to know what that is, go uh, to robhaswebsite.com slash crime feed in order to subscribe to Crime Scene while I'm out. Um, one of our amazing guests, Sarah D. Bunting, will be uh, holding down the second chair with Sarah. So the crime crime never stops. <laughs> so <laughs> Crime Scene's going to keep going uh, while I am away. Um over on the Wrestling Rehap Up, we are on hiatus. We just went to WrestleMania a few weeks ago. 
we had an amazing time. We had a chilly, very cold time in Philly. Um, but if you want to know about our experience, you can go check out our last podcast over on our YouTube uh, channel, youtube.com slash at wrestling wrap up. That's youtube.com slash at wrestling R H A P U P. Um, over on the recap kickback, just dropping today, we talked about Good Times Black Again, the animated reboot on Netflix. Me, Chappelle, and Ty really dove into this reboot. It was a very good discussion, a uh, very interesting show. Uh, I'm very wary of that show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely go listen to us talk about it and then decide about what you want to do about watching it. We had a lot of different perspectives and a a very good discussion about it. So I would definitely say go check out the Recap Kickback. You can go to recapkickback.com in order to subscribe or you can go to youtube.com slash at Recap Kickback in order to watch us. And then I will be on the Big Brother Canada Roundtable if you know today or whatever uh if they (laughs) drop some dailies who knows we're all flying by the seat of our pants with that coverage uh so yeah just check me out follow me on twitter yeah damn mario those plugs are almost as long as a season damn (laughs) i know i gotta (laughs) get get it in in before that baby comes yeah i gotta get it in before Mm -hmm. i can so what about you jason uh, you can find me on Twitter, J A Y R one zero eight five. Um, besides here, I'm also doing the Good Pod, where me and Marissa Garza are talking all things Good Wife Averse. Right now, we're talking about the show Elsbeth. We're doing two episodes at a time, so this uh, upcoming weekend will be uh, episodes four and five. So check us out there if you like that show. Um, where you so yeah, do that's, not that's... talk about the Good Place. No, the good place is definitely not part of the good averse. Let's keep that in mind. No, no talking about uh, Ted Danson or Kristen Bell in that show. Yeah, keep that in mind, AJ. Um, but yeah, that's about it for me uh, for right now. All right, and y'all can follow me on all social media at Asia Like Asia. It's A Y S H A like A S I A. And we will be back next week to talk. Where are they now? And hopefully, it's an interesting just cap off to this incredibly long season, but. Jason's favorite season of Married at First Sight, apparently. But we will be back next week. Make sure we will be back next week for the last podcast of the season. Make sure you uh, go join the Facebook group because we are active during the off season. So go join the Facebook group where the password is I'm an 8.5. You're a six. And we'll let you on in. Agree to the group rules. We're spoiler free during the season, but you're coming at the end of the season. There's no way to have spoilers. Unless you know stuff about Chicago, so don't say that. (laughs) Um, But yeah, (laughs) we will be back next week. So thank you all so much for sticking with us. And thank you, Mari, for being here. All right. See you all next week. Bye.